And we're live. I'm Anthony Dream Johnson, founder of 21 Studios, here with episode 51 of the Red Man Group. This episode episodes on the Red Pill Lens, how it applies to your life in total. We are broadcasting live out of 21 Studios Global Command in Orlando, Florida. We have an epic panel today, including myself, obviously. And from left, my left to right, we have Socrates from the 21 Convention and Manning Up Smart, Drew Bay from Bay.com, alumni speaker of the convention, the one and only Elliot Hulse from Strength Camp, uh, world famous for being Elliot Hulse. <laughs> We've gotten to know him the past couple days, and it has been absolutely fucking awesome. To my right, we have Richard Cooper from Entrepreneurs of Cars, alumni speaker of the 21 Convention, and of course, the godfather of the Manosphere with an upcoming keynote address, Rolo Tomasi, author of the Rational Mill book series, and you can find him at therationalmill.com. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me here in Orlando, Florida. Thanks hey, for having good us. Good to be here. Yeah. Glad to be here. So let's start off with a quick round table, uh, two minute recap. Sock, what do you got going on, man? Dude, we are just finalizing uh, production on a children's storybook series. Uh, so it's essentially filling a gap for strong masculine role figures, fathers, and having a positive influence and starting with children and fathers before they get broken. You know, when we talk about improving men's lives, usually you find the red pill after you've been broken. And what we're trying to do is provide the segue for men who may have been grossly underfathered or not have the skill sets or something to imprint on as a role model appropriately to be appropriate fathers and to make that connection with their children and to develop those life skills and transfer that kind of knowledge forward and provide that tool and ability to do so. So we're looking at uh, kind of finalizing that this coming week and then getting into post-production work. Yeah. yeah. Drew? Uh, I got some books on physique transformation and physical performance coming out in the next couple months and getting something special prepared for the uh, next 21 convention event in uh, May. Yeah, the upcoming Patriarchs got, event. Got something planned for all the fathers there. Hell yeah. Nice. Elliot, you're, uh, this is your third time on Red Man Group. Second mm -hmm. or third? Yeah. I think it's the second. Yeah, yeah, welcome back. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, man. What do you, uh, obviously we've been uh, hanging out a couple of days here in Orlando, but mm -hmm. what do you have going on with your work right now? My work? Well, two of the biggest projects are Strength Camp and Grounding Camp. Okay. And Strength Camp is where we transform boys into men, get people to be the strongest version of themselves through lifting. Uh, I was a professional strongman, I played college football, so uh, initiating people through the iron has been a passion of mine for many, many years. Uh, and then grounding camp is really where we're ministering to the souls of men. We've got the body, and we've got the soul here. And grounding camp has evolved into a sort of initiation process uh, whereby we get out of our own way by unstifling through active meditation and bioenergetics, so a lot of uh, breathing and movement and embodiment, you know, chest pounding and shouting and shit like that too. <laughs> and these are live events you host throughout Florida? Uh, throughout the US. Actually, okay. I, we were just in London. London and right. Amsterdam, and I did some there. Uh, last time I did an event in London, we had 500 Brits show up and we were shouting on a Sunday morning. I said, let's wake up the queen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it was a good time. Thank you. Badass. Mm -hmm. oh, where's the next one at, too? Uh, it's June in New York. Okay. Yeah, it's an incredible location where we can just be men away from society. How do people get tickets? Uh, Groundingcamp.com. But cool. they're not on sale yet, so. Okay. I know the feeling, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got tickets launching uh, 31st for the 21 Convention Patriarch Edition. Pretty excited about I'm that. excited to be there. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like out of the bag now. <laughs> so we had, a, we had a big surprise. Elliot uh, signed on last night for the 21 Convention Patriarch Edition. Yeah. Uh, huge addition to the event. Very excited to have you, man. Yeah, well very excited. Awesome. It's like a dream yeah. come true yeah. for me, yeah. honestly. Yeah. 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 I was thinking deeply about fatherhood all year. It's just been a theme in my mind and on my heart. Yeah. And to see what you guys are doing and to have this invitation, like I said, it's literally... My dreams coming true, so thank you. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. And big shout out to Hunter Drew for inspiring the event. It was uh, him asking me about doing an event for him someday that really brought that on. And then finding you guys, the fathers, to, everyone here will be speaking at it, except mm -hmm. me. I might do something small, we'll see. Well, we're working on it. Yeah. yeah. I'm working on yeah, it, gotta be a You, you got 20 mm -hmm. years. <laughs> Four fathers by fathers, patriarch edition. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. like the Red Man Group patriarchs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Rich, yeah. let's move on to you. Uh, it's been a busy week, so I came down here on Wednesday, I left uh, the Toronto area in a snowstorm, and we had to sit on the runway for two hours to get de-iced, um, and here I've been in paradise, Yeah, and it's warm, <laughs> it's warm here, you know, we were shooting, uh, we were shooting guns at a tactical training ramp, uh, ranch, 
Uh, actually, Trevor's here. We have an audience tonight. This is the first time we've had a, a live studio yeah. audience. Live studio <laughs> audience. Yeah. Anyway, so you invited us down to uh, do some tactical training on this uh, large property. It was like 25. How many acres was it? 25? 50. 50 acres. Yeah. yeah. Big ass property. Uh, and we shoot uh, Navy SEALed issued uh, rifles, like these seven, eight thousand dollar sniper rifles with big scopes on them, and you can shoot a target. Small target at, at range, 800 yards um, accurately, just by listening to what these guys tell you to do. So that was pretty incredible. Um, I saw you hit a target at 600 yards. Yeah, and well, I. That was fucking epic. Yeah, two back to back. And that yeah, was, yeah. you know, that was hard. It was actually hard to get the rifle uh, zeroed in properly. And then uh, today we did some filming mm -hmm. in a yeah. Lamborghini. So if you guys were following us on uh, social media, on Instagram and stuff like that, or Twitter, Rolla was live streaming uh, Periscope from the car. Um, yeah, so we got some very interesting footage coming out for you guys. Some of it, uh, you know, is going to be tied into the upcoming convention. Some of it's tied into uh, masculine companies that are supporting the creation of content for men, like what we do here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, it certainly helps us set up studios like this and fly people down and collaborate together, so we can put together great content that helps you guys uh, level up in life. So. It's been a fun week. I'm looking forward to uh, the next couple of days. We're hanging out for a few more days. Yep. We're going to get a shit ton more done. And uh, that's about it. Then I'm back to the uh, cold white north. Rolla? Yeah, you're, real, you're really in for it. I was looking at the weather report before I came out here, and it was like 30 below where you're at. It's, yeah, it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's cold. cold. <laughs> I know, it was pretty cold when I left. Um, just uh, came out here on Tuesday. Was it Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. And... Um, uh, I have a, anybody who doesn't know this, I have a house here in Florida as well, so um, just doing some things, uh, squaring things away at my new place, and then working with you guys. Uh, this whole, this has been kind of like a working vacation, I think. We did a little bit of fishing on... Uh, oh, yeah. the fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> let's not forget that part. I pulled a big-ass yeah, fish out of the water. Yeah, and there's some pictures of this guy with uh, his first... That was a fight. I gotta one. tell you, like, yeah. you know, being a kid pulling those little, like, bait fish out of the water... Yeah. And then pulling out something that weighed like a 45-pound plate. Uh, and it's fighting. Yeah, trying to get it's away from fighting. you. Yeah. Yeah. I was telling Anthony I want to do like, like sport fishing but deep sea. Like I want to get mm -hmm. like a sailfish or a big shark oh, or yeah. something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to do some charges. You yeah. got to do it in the springtime, um, which maybe we'll be doing pretty soon. Oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll right. even offer it to the VIPs as an upgraded oh, yeah. That might be fun. So yeah. if you guys like that, say something in the comments or put it below just so we know. Yeah. So, uh, so pretty much we've just been doing some promotional stuff here. Um, kind of, yeah. uh, also signing some contracts and yeah. Doing yeah. some other things and making, uh, making the red man group a little bit more of a, a formal organization, a formal, uh, company, if you will. Yeah. yeah. We intend to do this for yes. a while. We're, yeah. This is, we, we have signed our names on the dotted line and I'm sure that eventually we'll kind of, you know, leak out all of the information, but yeah. you know, we, we've got, we've got some things planned and this is one of them. Uh, sat in, I sat in a Lamborghini today mm -hmm. <laughs> and oh my neck, <laughs> but, uh, so other than that, uh, just working on book four, and that I'm trying to get to a point where I can just focus on nothing else but the book. And one of my um, goals for this trip was to see if I could find some way to sort of isolate myself so I can write for like weeks, you know, weeks at a time wow. here in Florida. So you've had a few, uh, yeah, fuck yeah, man. Yeah. You've had a few uh, big posts come out lately too, right? Generally yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, I I did um, I did one on the Gillette commercial, but uh, I did that and that was a little bit more. I fleshed that out a little bit more beyond that. Um, the most recent post I have is called Gender War, and it has been, well, actually something we'll probably talk about today. Yeah. Um, I, I see the Gillette commercial, I see the APA ruling, the American Psychological Association, uh, ruling that traditional masculinity is toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, it's not just, I mean, you saw, um, you saw, if you saw Dr. Smith, Dr. Sean Smith's uh, video about that, uh, he risks his, uh, his livelihood. He risks his license uh, if he goes against that. And that is a set of guidelines that is entirely um, motivated by ideology. And so I was writing against, I was writing against stuff like that. But um, as you guys all know, uh, back on uh, the 21 convention, uh, I did a State of the Manosphere address, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to that coming out soon. January 29th. Um, 29th. Okay. So now you all have a date. Um, but in that, and then also on our, 20, our, uh, our December 29th show, uh, we made some predictions for the new year. And if you want to go back and look at some of those predictions, you can, but 
I didn't. I knew they were going to come true, but I didn't think they were going to come true in the first two weeks of January. Uh, going forward, I really feel like we are um, stepping into uh, what I call a gender war. Uh, I've got a hashtag called gender war right now. Um, and so whenever I see something that I think relates to that, I'll go and throw that out on Twitter. But uh, I, see, uh, I see the APA, I see the Gillette commercial, I see what PETA did, the, I don't know if you guys saw the PETA commercial as well. Um, and then you've got uh, Serena Williams that's supposed to be giving some sort of speech about you know, women power on the Super Bowl. And I knew the Super Bowl commercials were going to be very gender motivated but they're already trying to, to precede it. You know, they're already trying to say, hey, make sure you watch this because this is the year, really, 2019 through 2020, where we're going to be getting into a, uh, uh, we're laying the groundwork, I should say, for um, the social conditions that will lead up to the 2020 election. Yeah. And I think maybe that's what you wanted to talk about today. So yeah, that's one of the yeah. things we'll get into today, probably mm -hmm. some politics, because the red pill, so today's topic is the red pill applied to other areas of your life. And we were talking about, you and I a few days ago, we were talking about our, you know, like our relationships with our parents and how we, and how we viewed that mm -hmm. growing up. Today, we were talking about politics and the red pill and how that all ties in. So uh, yeah, updates are done. Yeah. You're leaving give, the show, give, where do you uh, wanna go? Yeah, I'll give a final note here. So on the 29th, we're dropping the State of the Manosphere from Royal Tomasi, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Same day as Trump's State of the Union, that's going on. January 31st, tickets drop for the first time ever to the 21 Convention Patriarch Edition. Everyone here is a speaker at the event. Uh, myself will be like ceremonial at it. Everyone will also be a content speaker though. Elliot is probably the final speaker we're gonna tag on to the event. I think we have 14 now, maybe 15. Gotta double check. That's, uh, that's looking huge. I was expecting maybe 150, 200 guys at it, but it might be quite a bit more than that now, three, 400 guys. Mm -hmm. I got to uh, put a cap on that, sign on a dotted line in a couple days here for the event space and all that. Yeah, so if you want those tickets, you're going to have to watch out for the early bird price on the 31st. That's right. That's right. I'll make a mention as well that Tactical Soap is now a sponsor of 21 Studios, the Red Man Group, and Entrepreneurs in Cars. So if you're watching this before you get further into the show, check out the description underneath the video. Buy some soap. Support a company that does not punch men in the dick. Yeah. This is a company that supports men. We all know the founder personally, me and Rich and Rollo, and Sock, Andrew Bay. He was at the event this past year. This guy's awesome. He supports men. He supports what we're doing. He supports the creation of more content like this. Videos, events, interviews, all these things. Buy Tactical Soap, soap, support the men, support the content, support yourself, support the country you live in by buying soap. Simple as that. Plus it's got pheromones. <laughs> so I do like the topic that it's uh, the red pill lens applied to the totality of your life. Mm. That's kind of how I was thinking about it. It's like the red pill does obviously affect how you interact with women, it affects dating, marriage, children, parenting, all that. Why don't we do this? Why don't we go across the pan pan panel and just spend a couple minutes talking yeah. about how we've unplugged from like the sexual dynamics of mm -hmm. what the red pill was kind of solving, maybe for a lot of us because of trauma. I mean, it was for me anyway. Yeah. Um, and maybe like whatever you've seen th differently now that you're red pilled. Let's start with sock. Yeah. It, it, interesting you talk about that. Uh, I know that probably personally we probably discuss it, but probably not as openly on a form like this. Uh, I, I can sit down and say we talk about unplugging from the blue pill and, and seeing the matrix and everything else and, and becoming aware of the red pill and all that, what that constitutes. I can sit down and say my personal journey has led and pretty much changed my life from being not necessarily celibate, you know, but childless, you know, that I would sit down and say I would not be able to put out a genetic lineage and at 48, I ended up having my own child, you know, and completely taken on that role and mantle. And it personally is probably the high watermark of my life, bar anything I've ever done in my life. And that means professionally, personally, activity wise, everything else. And it's gone beyond that. Uh, and let, let me take a quick step back further. And primarily, I have two people here that's sitting on this panel. I have a tremendous debt of gratitude. Uh, first is Roe's work that extends over past a decade. You know, that he originally, when I was reading some of his work on a blog uh, and on forums, was he was, you know, a voice in the, the, you know, the internet. 
Uh, he wasn't a real dude. It was just something there. You just don't quite believe it. Uh, and it's progressed to the point as all this has become mainstream. He and I are actually able to meet. He's been at my house. I've been able to meet his wife, you know, and, and have that personal real world face meet interaction. That is very much a reflection of how the red pill has transformed over time. Uh, in addition to that, I'm changing my professional work because of it. I look at what I do as an architect and essentially I'm building hollow shells for people to fill. Uh, what do you do when that the people filling your buildings and creations and giving light to society and culture and civilization are diseased and hollowed and decrepit and rotting from within? You know, that it doesn't matter what the architecture is. And not only that, culture will not create wondrous architecture when it's in that vein. You know, you look at any of these collapsing societies, they did not do monumental work, you know, that lasts and tests the time. Uh, personally, I'm taking a big step back. Uh, I'm letting that go because I, it was interesting when you meet people whose lives you touched uh, transform. You know, Rollo talks about, you know, uh, saving a guy from suicide. You know, the first time somebody told me, I can, I still taste the metal, uh, the taste of metal in my mouth. And guys like you help get me past that. And then I go into work and I'm dealing with client issues. It just doesn't compare. You know, I can't tell you that the best grand opening of any facility I've ever done, and it's been, you know, 20, 30 million dollars worth of work, that it doesn't compare to see people who have quality lives, that have quality relationships, who are working on their marriages and succeeding at them and seeing wonderful children come out of that compared to any body of work that's going to last beyond my life. Uh, and so you sit down and say that that sheer joy and fulfillment, that's changed my life. And that's what Red Pill's done for me personally. Damn, well put. Drew, how's the Red Pill affect your life? Oh, man. Beyond well, marriage. a few years ago, um, actually over a period of time, I had become less and less my own mental point of origin. And at the time, I didn't recognize it as such. It wasn't until after the 2017 convention mm -hmm. where things I mean, really started to come together. And realizing the direction things were going in and how unhappy I was with you know, marriage and just feeling like, you know... I'm not accomplishing anything, I'm not going anywhere, not happy with it. Making myself my, men, my own mental point of origin and deciding I need to focus on my mission and make everything else you know, secondary to that has made a tremendous difference. Marriage improved. I'm much happier. Wife is much happier. I can tell just talking to you, man. I've known you since 2009. It's, You're like... And well, you know, I can't remember clearly, but I think we might have been talking at one point about making plans to do something. And my first thought was, you know, well, I need to find out if we've got anything going on this weekend. And looking back on that, like, holy yeah. crap, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> I, my only thought at that should, moment should have been, well, do I want to do this? Okay, yeah, then we will. And if anything else is going on, well, they can change it and plan around it. It has been just a 180 degree change. Even, you know, not just the marriage, but also understanding this and being able to teach my son this, I think of all the dumb shit that I did when I was a teenager, a lot of it because of one-itis. Yeah. One-itis has probably caused me more misery <laughs> as a teenager and caused me to do more dumb shit for women um, and I'm, I'm not, I know I'm not the only one. It's probably the amount of dumb shit men have done for women because of unitis is probably almost unimaginable. And how old is your son now, Luke? He's 13. He's not going to go through that because I'm talking to him about this stuff regularly. Actually, he was present for uh, Rich's uh, presentation. And I tell him over and over, you get, remember this stuff, especially... You don't pursue women, you pursue excellence, and they will pursue you. Hopefully I'm not butchering the quote too much. It's a general idea. Yeah. yeah. But also, my, my work is not teaching this stuff to people. My work is helping people you know, get themselves in shape. But most of the men that come to me for that are doing it because they want to be more successful with women. Unfortunately, a lot of them, they come to me after they've already gone through a divorce. And they're like, yeah. well, I'm back on the market and I look like shit, and I need to get back to where I was, 
And so not only am I able to help them with that, but knowing this stuff, I'm able to help them avoid a lot of the mistakes that a lot of guys are making that, that don't have this information. So I feel like I'm providing a lot more value to the people that I'm coaching than what they would get from just the exercise stuff. And, and it, it show, I don't want to give out personal details about any of my clients and their girlfriends and wives and other shit like that, but telling them to read Rolo's books, watch Entrepreneurs in Cars, I have shared your video on not dating single mothers <laughs> with more men than I can imagine. Every time I share it, a bunch of single mother skanks get mad at me and send me a bunch of, of hate mail, and I keep thinking, you know what? Fuck you. I've just saved some guy from putting up with your bullshit. But they thank me, and I get the horror stories and the, the DMs yeah. and the PMs about the recent single mother that they dated and all the crap that they went through. So... I'm thrilled at how my own life has improved, but also that I'm able to pass all this stuff on and it's making a huge difference on, yeah. in a lot of other guys' lives. Yeah. So yeah. it's been awesome. And having yeah. known you for 10 years now, man, you definitely are, you're, I've sensed uh, clarity from you and more assertiveness and aggressiveness. And it's good seeing you post about it all the time and hearing you talk. It just, I, I told uh, huh? Eric from Yeah. You know, 2017 lit a fire under my ass that mm -hmm. was desperately needed. 2018 poured jet fuel on it. Oh yeah, there we go. So I've, you know, it's we're not talking about money and stuff. My income has doubled since yeah. the 2018 because I'm like because of the reinforcement of making myself my mission yeah. and being more assertive, being more aggressive with things like the marketing and well, even and just throwing this dating stuff out in there. I've avoided it before because yeah, it's fitness stuff. But now I'm thinking, what the fuck? I'm gonna say whatever the hell I want. The reaction. For example, I posted uh, something today and I said, ladies, you know, if your husbands have gotten you know, lazy and comfortable and they're not the stud that you married and they're not turning you on anymore, I can help. And no, not like that, but you, you've yeah. got to buy them my books. <laughs> yeah. And if they apply the information in them, then within a few months, you're going to be changing your panties every time you see them <laughs> with a shirt off. Yeah. And before, I wouldn't have posted something like that because I'd be like, well, yeah, people are going to get upset. I don't fucking care. Anybody that would get upset is probably not somebody that I want to work with anyways. <laughs> Surprisingly, every time I post something like this, it's the women that are sending me the messages and saying you know, how much they like the difference in the approach. Yeah. And yes, my husband needs to do this. And all. So guys... Your fucking wives notice when you get fat and lazy, and they're not happy with it, and you're not getting them wet anymore. You gotta, you gotta fucking take care of yourselves and get in shape. But well, just like I wouldn't have said this like two years ago, because I've been, you know, I don't give, I don't fucking care. Uh, if you do, you're not somebody I want to work with, anyways. But it's been, it's been fucking phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal. Set so, so, Elliot, how's the red pill affected your life since finding it? You found MGTOW first, and you got a red pill, right? Yeah, I did. And uh, the one thing that comes to mind, the overall umbrella feeling, is civil disobedience and not, a simple act of noncompliance. And what I mean by that is that to be awoken to how we're manipulated mm -hmm. causes people to do things like MGTOW. Yeah. Just, okay, I'm being manipulated, so I'm going to step back. MGTOW being an example of how they're being manipulated by women. But what I've discovered is that it's a paradigm that oppresses in this particular way, not just women, mm -hmm. but a feminized society, a system designed to uh, the agenda, you guys call it. There's the feminist primary agenda. Is that how you say it? Feminine, yeah. Yeah, female Gynocrat. primary Gynocrat. social Gynocrat. order. Gynocrat. Right. And so when you, I started looking deeper into that, I started to see all the other tendrils that kind of came out from that and wrapped itself around us unconsciously. And a lot of that had to do with consumption and overconsumption. And I think the area where we are blinded at how much we overconsume and how it feeds into the primary, the feminine primary you society. Mean, you don't mean just buying, you mean like overconsuming information or all that shit, right? All of it, yeah. Consumption is, it's very feminine. The school system set us up as boys who are very active and extroverted to be very 
passive and consumptive, like a vagina. You know how a vagina <laughs> takes in? The more you're a consumer, the more you're a vagina, the more you're a woman. So yeah. spending, consuming information, eating, addictions, consuming, consuming. Just think every time that you're taking in, you're being like a woman. You're being like a beta. You're doing what they want you to do. It's, uh, it's not masculine at all. Civil disobedience is masculine. Boundaries is masculine. Being conservative is, ba is masculine. And so as a fitness coach, I began thinking about, I'm always thinking about improving my health. But then as a rebel, which I've always been even before I discovered Blue Pill. You're in the I right love, place, man. Huh? You're in the right place. Yeah, yeah. I love, <laughs> yes, of course. I love disobeying and I like shaking shit up. And I think that if we began adopting a lifestyle of saying no, that will make a big difference. And so I've decided to begin that with fasting. And this is something that people have used throughout forever, not just as a, uh, as a means for health and development and fat loss and spirituality, but as a, as a symbol of non-compliance. You know, like Gandhi, stop eating. They all want to, want to strike. Our system is set up such that it succeeds because we consume. If everybody would just stop eating, as crazy as that sounds, as mind-blowing or nuts as that sounds to you right now because you're so conditioned to consume, to suck in, to eat, to be fat, to be sick, to be lazy, to be dependent. It reminds me a lot of debt too. Debt, all of it. Yeah. But I see it as a very, the, the simplest act of non-compliance that will break the system and add to your health and longevity is to skip a meal. So fasting, I'm, I'm finding that fasting has been, uh, for many years for me, it has been mind expanding and also invigorating for my body. But now as a result of blue, uh, red pill, mm -hmm. I see it as an act of non-compliance that is a strike at the system that oppresses us. So stop buying their food, stop eating their shit, stop consuming so much. You're doing pretty hardcore stuff. You're going two, three days at a time. Okay. Yeah, extended okay. fasting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was a professional strongman, so at my biggest, I was 250 pounds. I'm, I knew what, it liked, what it's like to be a consumer. I've got four children. I don't have a, a minimalist life. But uh, at this point, I've decided that m my health, but also my values in life and the stance that I take uh, are far more important than having you know, huge muscles or being big. I'd rather be small and powerful like a fucking spark or dynamite than a big, lazy, fat fuck that can... I'm pretty sure your personality is still huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me stop right there. But yeah, stop eating. That's where I'm at right now. Badass. Mm -hmm. Rich? You How's go, man. You yeah. go. Yeah, let's, All right, let's, let's do it. For, let's hear from the commander in chief at Twenty One Studios. <laughs> so I've been thinking about this. Yeah, you mentioned. I think Roland mentioned where the show went, like parents and stuff. Mm. So I'll say uh, that the, one of the ways Red Pills affected me that I haven't talked about much publicly is my brothers and sisters. I have one brother and two sisters. So mostly it's we the sisters. My brother, I understand a little bit more because I'm a man too. He's a young man himself. He's twenty one. So I have a little sister who's 27, an older one, he lives here with the 21 Studios with me, who's 35. And, you know, I've gotten to know them my whole life. I grew up with them, our parents are still married, grew up together in a big house. But since finding the Red Pill, way more than Pickup ever taught me. Pickup taught me how to pick up chicks. It did not teach me about women. It taught me a little bit, but not much. But the Red Pill taught me about women. So seeing my sister now at 35, still not married, still single, you know, that kind of shit. I can understand how she's dating now. I can understand her behaviors, going out there to parties, we go downtown, we meet people, you know, she knows friends of mine, I know her friends, sometimes a little better than others. <laughs> uh, even the younger one too, she's 27, she has a boyfriend now. He's uh, older, he's like late 30s, I think. And so I'm watching how they date, watching how they interact, listening to the things they say, and it's enlightening. Like I understand them better, and they're my blood. They're, you know, we have the same exact parents, as far as I know. Um, so that's, that's been the past couple of years since finding the red pill. It's been, it's been really neat. And without it, I would not understand them and be as, not that I'm super close to them, but we're pretty close, I think, for being adults now. Especially my older sister and I, we lived here, you know, in the same house. Mm -hmm. So that's been, uh, that was a surprise. 
I found the red pill through one of our attendees, Nicholas Cloud, who watched a speech I gave on a crazy ass ex-wife. And I was at that time focused on pickup, getting back in the game, and personality disorders, like we're literally seeing on the shelf here. So that was my focus then, but finding the red pill, that was a really eye-opening experience itself, finding Rolla's work in particular. But I did not anticipate that it would improve my relationships and understanding of my own family. Mm-hmm. My mother too, my cousins. I got a cousin too who's now getting, you know, going through divorce. And from a distance, I can spot exactly what's going on. It's the exact same shit that's happening top to bottom that we read about all the time. Frivolous divorce, all that bullshit. So without that, I'd be in the dark. I'd be ignorant. And I'm not. I understand a lot better now with a high degree of certainty what I'm watching, what I'm seeing. Another one, too, is that uh, I had a young cousin, like a second cousin, Mark, uh, a couple months ago, killed himself mm-hmm. at 20 years old. And without the knowledge of the red pill and the manosphere overall, but especially the red pill, uh, he was 20 and he offed himself, college football player, star football player, he offed himself over a girl. Mm-hmm. Had I not had the red pill and the understanding that I've developed through that knowledge and through that study, I would be just big the rest of my family. I would not understand. It would be this, this mystery. It's like, oh, you know, shit happens. People die. Mm-hmm. Men kill themselves more than women, and that's it. No, it's more than that. I, I can look at that situation and understand the blue pill bullshit he was fed and accepted. And then, sure enough, a chick came along, oneitis, all that. A combination of factors, for sure. But it was the blue pill stuff, I think, that set him off. Mm-hmm. That is what pushed him over the edge at that point, and he's gone now. And as bad as that is, it's fucking horrible. I would much rather be enlightened and understand that than just be ignorant and just, you know, mm-hmm. look at it as a tragic event. So it's more than that. It's something I can learn from as horrifying as it is. Mm-hmm. So I'd say it's improved my family relationships in a myriad of ways, whether it's sisters, cousins, or even my little cousin who killed himself. It's, uh, it's made my life a lot better. I always think that uh, you never go wrong facing reality. You never go wrong finding the truth, mm-hmm. no matter how dark or positive that is. So there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Thank you, everybody that's shared those experiences. Those are those are solid. Um, I think for me, one of the things that led me to the red pill, part of that trauma, wasn't wasn't just the uh, single mommy breakup episode, but it was also what happened for about three years from 2014 to 2015, 16, where. Um, I had to deal a lot with uh, lobbyists and. Uh, political critics on bills in parliament because of a business that gets people out of credit card debt at a discounted rate. And I saw the difference in the values and the views of the political parties. And um, it was, you know, it was confusing because you hear all these people autistically screeching about how uh, we need to care about people more and love them more. And, um, you know, make sure that they've got the skills and tools available to become the better version of themselves. And yet there's political parties that don't support values that accomplish that. There's ideologies that don't support the accomplishment of those things that men seek. And um, The Rational Male, of course, was the book that woke me up, that made me understand, you know, the way that men and women interact and why things happen sort of thing. Um, and it's a deep rabbit hole and you keep going down and I still learn things every day, of course, but the political aspect of it for me was big. It was like, okay, well, recently I've been thinking about it a lot and, and, you know, people ask me from time to time about, you know, views on politics and you'll even see today, like if you go to Instagram, uh, there's a picture of me, Anthony and Elliot standing by the Lambo and the comments were the MAGA hat makes you look like a dummy. And who's the Mexican at the end of the picture? I think they called Elliot a racist, right? Yeah, yeah. And because I think you had a MAGA hat on too, right? Delusional. But like me as a Canadian, like I look at that hat and I just think, well, it's red and it says make a country great again. So what's wrong with that? That seems like a pretty good thing. And, you know, as time kind of passed, like when you apply the red pill to the political landscape, I saw really how bad of a prime minister Justin Trudeau is. And every time I've watched him in an interview since I've been red pilled, because he's our prime minister currently. Um, it's the same thing over and over again. It's let's make men less so women can be, you know, become more. And how does that serve society? How, you know, how, how does that serve the tribal nature of human beings? And I don't believe that it does. It's, it's sure as heck not red-pilled. So that's one of the things that I wanted to kind of like go down tonight, maybe, you know, talk a little bit as well about is um, how, do you, how do you identify 
um, what political ideology or system best aligns with the red pill? Because I think that's an interesting question. I'll leave it at that. Go ahead. Well, I, you know, when you and I were discussing tonight's topic, uh, I think it was like two days ago, we were just kind of kicking back and brainstorming and stuff. And I think I was telling you some stories about um, how, how my mom is and how my dad is. And my dad was a full on, like, hardcore atheist, okay? I mean, very, very analytical. He was like Mr. Spock, okay? Now, hmm. not in a bad way. He was, he's not like one of these guys, like, you know, who goes out there and preaches it or anything like that. He's not like, he's not a Sam, he certainly wouldn't be a Sam Harris. He certainly oh, wouldn't be uh, anybody like that. But, you know, he just simply had no belief. And then, then you said, well, what's your mom like? And I said, well, my mom is kind of a lovable ditz, right? She was a born again Christian. And I, said, and I when we're talking about this, like, how the hell did those two people come together, right? Well, then I started, like, going over this, and I've, do I've done this before. I kind of worked this over in my head and a, a few times. Um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm amazed that I was even the result of these two, this, this woman and this man coming together to have not just me, but my brother as well. And, um, and so when I look at it, you got to figure out, you know, what the, what the time, you know, what the social setting was, I guess, during, like, say, the, the 50s or 60s, you know, when they're, when they're meeting and dating and all that. Um, and then putting the things that I know about intersexual dynamics into that context or into that framework. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because we have to do that today as well. We can't, I think we, we have um, kind of this mixed up, well, it's mixed up, we have this kind of like tunnel vision, I think, when it comes to, um, well, we're in 2019, and we understand whatever it was that Rollo wrote about in the in the Rational Male book, right? And so we take that and we go, "Gosh, it's so, you know, it's so consciousness expanding, right?" But we have to see that you have to understand that that book could only be produced at this time. Uh, if I was to take that that what I wrote there and I try to go through like a traditional publishing house, they would they would laugh at me and say, "Get the fuck out of here! You're not going to deal with that." Um, you know, because that's misogynist stuff. Anything that's anti-feminist, misogynist. But th that book exists now because of all the stuff that has happened up to now. And so I can take these dynamics that are universal dynamics. I, I was just looking in the in the chat here, and guys are saying, you know, it's like the Bible. I'm like, well, it's not Bible, but it is a living text, which is like the Bible, where you keep coming back to it to learn a different lesson about something else. Um, in this case, I was trying to apply it to my mom and my dad's relationship. I'm like, how do these two people, these disseparate people come together and, and create a kid or much less two? And I, and I thought about this. My dad was this very, um, stable, very old books kind of guy. If you've read my book, you know what I'm talking about? Like he's, he's the old social contract guy. Like he, you go to work, you, you put in an honest hour, your honest days paid and you get an honest, you know, paycheck at the end of the day and you get a pension and then you go and you retire in sunny Florida and you play golf until you die. You know, that's the, that's the sort of the white American, uh, Anglo-Saxon dream for, you know, for guys that has been around for a very long time. I prefer fishing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, fishing is a lot of fun. See, Learn yeah, well, you yeah. Could, I guess you could do that too, but, um, but that doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. But the dynamics that get people together still exist. So when I talk about hypergamy or I talk about just some of the, the fundamentals in the books, that applies all the way back to ancient Greece, to even before that, to the 1950s when my, you know, 60s when my parents got together, the 70s when we're all, you know, having sex after going dancing at Studio 54 or some shit like that. You know what I mean? It's just the, the, the mechanics stay the same, but the context changes out. And so when I go back and I look at that and I look at the stories that were created um, during those times between like a man and a woman, I see the fundamental truths of that. Just like you're saying with your, with your family, with your, mm -hmm. your brothers and stuff, you see that happening because you're, you're aware now. It's like when we talk about the red pill lens, you can't unsee the, uh, what, what you're seeing. Like when guys want to sort of plug themselves back into the matrix, when they want to sort of ignore things, they don't want to, you know, they, it's too much for them to accept. And guys want to talk about, oh, it's the black pill, right? There's, there is no black pill. There's only the abyss that you can't cross from going from the blue pill into the red pill. And once, because once you're there, once you have, once you have become red pill aware, and once you understand uh, intersexual dynamics, then from there, you can apply that to other things. So we can talk about politics, we can talk about religion, we can talk about race, we can talk about you know, how 
how does the how does those mechanics, those functional mechanics I was just talking about, how do those apply to different contexts? So now it's not just about uh, a, a, a linear context of time, but it, it's it's into different aspects of our life. Like we were just talking about the Gillette ad. Okay, why is that why is that so triggering to guys who are red pill? Well, it's because we see this and we see the bullshit behind it. And the first thing I do is I go and I look and to see you know who was the the director of it. Well. Imagine that it's a radical feminist who was hired by Gillette, who uh, hired a agency called Gray. Gray was just let go by the NFL. If I can interject on the Gillette thing, mm -hmm. I think what's interesting is that guys in the red pill, we see the Gillette ad, and we can mm -hmm. both get angry at it and break it down like you're doing and understand what went into it and right. why it exists. And that's what f that is the most frustrating part of that. Well, the other is, I'm not, like, I'm not threatened by it. Well, and and I've, been, I've been accused no, by no, it no, being threatened. I, I, I can be no. angry the without being threatened. The frustration I have about right. the Gillette commercial is like me wanting to say, look, this is bullshit, and just look at, all the, look at all the events that led up to this. And then I see that in a bigger picture. Let me throw some jet fuel on your, on your argument here. Okay. So <laughs> you... Guys in the red pill, and especially guys at your level, you're armed. The mm. average guy right now, mm. that Gillette thing is taken off. They're pissed off, yes. but they don't have the weapons intellectually to break it down and analyze it. Mm -hmm. We do. Even the, right, the right average guy in the red pill understands that shit. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, the difference of taking the red pill. And that's like one way now it's applied outside of like immediate, you know, how do I get laid or something. Mm -hmm. They can see this shitty Gillette ad and understand why it's fucked up and why it's bad for them and their mm -hmm. life and everyone around them. See, so. I always have to I always have to deal with different sides of this because I'm all about the nuts and bolts, okay? I'm all about how does the car go together? How 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 does the mechanics work to the proxology? Yeah, to, yeah, the proxology of yeah. it. I'm, I'm, as I think it was Ryan or Carl says, I'm, I'm making, I'm writing the Chilton manual for, uh, <laughs> for uh, intersexual <laughs> dynamics, right? So I, I look at that, but then I, I also can't ignore that um, there is there are organized forces mm -hmm. that want that are actively fighting against us even being in this room together mm -hmm. um, to t even discuss this I know this was part of my, my speech I don't want to give away too much of my speech <laughs> but um, just coming together mm -hmm. in this in one room with the 200 guys so we can talk about things like this that is instantly misogyny it's instantly hate speech um, it's it's just the side of a crime so far uh, but when I see that, what frustrates me about that, that is that I see this. It's like, you know, I remember in, uh, was it Rowdy Roddy Piper with the, the glasses in them? Or yeah. They Live? Yeah, yeah it was oh, yeah, They yeah, Live. Yeah, and you could live. see, like, all the stuff, and he would take them off, and he would mm -hmm. put them back on. And it's like, I can't take the, the glasses off. You know, I can't unsee. I can't see. And I think that when guys talk about it, and I'll just finish up here. But when I see guys talk about the black pill, I think what it is is they, they want to take the glasses off. Yeah. But they can't take the glasses off. And so all they're seeing is red pill truths all, all around them. And I do the same thing sometimes. Like when I see stuff like that, I see, I'm beginning to see a much larger picture right now. This is why I wrote uh, the gender war uh, post. Mm. Because I see the, uh, I see the country um, sort of building up into what I wrote about in, um, in 2016. I wrote a post called uh, The First Female President and just how dedicated everyone was to getting Hillary uh, as the first female president. They didn't care if it was Hillary. They just want the first female president. Mm -hmm. And the same thing's happening right now. Uh, you've got, what, four different, five different uh, women yeah. on the Come Democratic on, side Harris who are, have all, all announced that they're going mm -hmm. to, to run for president within the first two weeks of, of, uh, of January of 2019. This is, the, this is where the election cycle starts right here. And this is where, this is what I mean by that. Not a single man ha, and, uh, that I know of has declared that on the Democratic side that he's going to run against Trump. One because guy. you can't. Well, because they, they male, want that not female. A man, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beto. There's one. Yeah. Yeah. Beto, okay, okay. Beto <laughs> male. Beto male. So, let's, so let's talk about the politics of Red Pill because we've got a couple of MAGA hats in here. Uh, I'm interested as a Canadian in the States right now, and it's like this shit show that I get to watch from my backyard porch. It's like I sit on my backyard porch, and I got my barbecue done, and I'm having a drink, and I'm looking out over the yard, and over the fence, there's like some crazy shit going on. Um, not that it's, you know, a lot less crazy in Canada, but um, you guys have two political parties, right? Like, for well, we the main two part. Major two, ones. Two, ones. two major ones would get like 90% of the votes, right? Yeah. So Democrat, Republican, uh, Democrats more liberal, more left leaning, more socialist values. Republicans more conservative values, right? I think most voters though are independent, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah. But okay. They end, going, they end up swinging either party come an election. Yeah, to influence yeah. the direction of the comp- uh, the uh, country, right. right? So, so my question would be like, what what political value system? And we have libertarian, we have green stuff. Like, there's all kinds of like I- mm-hmm. ideologies out there. So, what what political party would you say is best aligned with the intent of the red pill? I'll just open this up and say that I don't consider myself a Republican so much or a conservative or any of that stuff or a Democrat, especially not a Democrat, hell no. Never been a Democrat, proudly, never been a Democrat, Democrat. But I will say I call myself a Ron Paul Republican and a, a solid, very, very strong Trump supporter. So I was one of the Ron Paul guys in 2009 and 2012. And then Trump came around, I eventually swung to Trump. I have supported libertarians and stuff at some point, at various points, but Ron Paul Republican and Trump supporter hardcore. And that's different, I think, than being a standard bearer Republican by a long shot, especially the old guard, the old establishment. Uh, also, I like the Libertarian Party, but they never get their shit together for decades upon decades. That sucks. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's my political philosophy, and it's back, the backbone is objectivism. Do you think that the Libertarian side has better ideas than the Republican side? Or worse ideas? <sighs> I think the Republican Party is changing. That are more aligned with the red pill? Like I'm, like I'm trying to keep it connected yeah, to yeah, the red yeah, pill yeah. values so and intent. I think the Republican Party right now is changing to be a lot better aligned with like the red pill and true ideas. Mm. Before, they were just shit. I mean, five or six years ago, I wouldn't have given them... In 2012, I couldn't have given a shit less about Mitt Romney. Mm. That was the most boring, useless mm-hmm. candidate I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and Obama was you know, no better. They're the same candidate. They're shit. Mm. But I would say that the red pill to me is truth. That's what the focus is, fundamentally. Mm. And the truth of being a human being, especially a man, particularly a man, is freedom. Mm -hmm. So libertarianism is very focused on freedom, but with that party comes a lot of problems. The Republicans now, Trump, I think, is pushing them slowly. It's a beginning towards freedom. So the party got away from that for a long time, and that was shit. A long time ago, they were very focused on freedom. Conservatism used to mean freedom, or it was loosely in that direction. Then they got, like, completely off track over the past you know, 80 years or something. Mm. So I would say the fundamental, the fundamental political principle is individual freedom. And that to me is very much in line with the red pill. And that's why now being the red pill being apolitical, I think that was useful and it still is, but the political environment has gotten so fucking intense that you have to choose a side. And there's only one side at this point, the right ish that even cares about freedom. Mm -hmm. The left has thrown it out the window. The problem with the left is that they, and and it's not really a, a right left continuum, and it's yeah. not even really a, a two dimensional plane. But it's probably the best way to think of it yeah. is imagine if you get two axes: one you've got economic freedom, and one you've got financial freedom. And and instead of being on its side, it's a diamond. You got zero economic freedom, zero financial freedom, and then zero financial to one hundred percent financial, zero economic or sorry, uh, or economic. Zero personal freedom to 100 personal freedom. So you've got left and right, more economic freedom, more, or sorry, more personal freedom and more financial or economic freedom. But as you get towards the top, you have more of both overall. As you get towards the bottom, you have less. At the very bottom would be tyranny, authoritarianism. At the very top would be pure libertarianism. The Democrats aren't all the way to the left and the Republicans aren't all the way to the right because none of them are for absolute zero economic freedom and none of them are for absolute zero you know, personal freedom. They're somewhere you know, in the middle or were somewhere in the middle towards the right and towards the left. And you've got a, a little clump of voters that were right around there with a bunch of people that were in between that would swing either way. Problem is the Democrats, instead of being kind of middle left, used to be more liberal left, more overall freedom left, but they're moving not further left, but further down towards authoritarianism. The left are becoming the fascists. They're accusing the right. Other people of being, yeah. Yeah. And I've never really voted left or right. I've always thought, okay, if you got a politician, where does he fall on this grid? I don't care how far to the left or right he is. I care how far up or down he is. More or less freedom overall, or relative to the other candidates, 
will he move the average up or will he move the go. average down? So you guys are saying basically the same thing. The closer to freedom, the closer yeah. it is to the red pill. And the Trump, left Trump has used been to be a Democrat, though. for example, I think in the 90s, mm -hmm. for example. And, he, and a lot of people have accused him during the campaign of being a liberal. And there's probably some truth to that. Mm -hmm. But like Drew's saying, he's pushing the country towards freedom or at minimum, in my opinion, setting it up for more and more freedom over time. So he's busting people, shit up to get, make that happen. People, for example, that saw some of our social posts today and said things like, mm. you should take off that hat, you look stupid, or it makes you look stupid, yeah. are basically implying because you support a stronger America and Donald yeah. Trump's slogan, mm. you're dumb. And you should be supporting their per party leader. Perception is projection. These yeah, yeah. So, shit. yeah. So can you... And these are people, by the way, that like follow my regular content. I'm talking yeah. about a lot of red pill shit, so they obviously subscribe to what um, I have conversations about. So I guess another question I have is, can you, can you, ha can you support democratic values here in the U.S. and be red pilled? No. Yeah, I think that's going out the window pretty fast. Yeah. Well, and what do you mean by that yeah. when you say democratic well, values? Yeah. What are those values? What are the values? I think, yeah. yeah. Well, the standard, you know, like democratic platform that I see anyway is the one that Hillary, you know, Hillary brought to the table, which was just more of what the left keeps autistically screeching about all the time, right? <laughs> so, you know, these guys that are saying, well, Trump's an idiot, well, you really only got two choices. You're either a Republican or you're a Democrat. So that tells me that you're that you're more of a lefty. You like the lefty values, but you claim to be red pilled. So how do you so how do you be red pilled but support a party's value system that is destructive to masculinity that supports retarded Gillette commercials about you know men being toxic that supports the APA's ruling on all like traditional masculinity being toxic. The left is responsible for most of the problems that the families are having right now. 100%. The unintended consequences of increased social welfare are that women now, again, hypergamy and action probably, see that they can have the government as their baby daddy. Well, the government the you know, then becomes the head of the household, yeah. and the man is then replaced. Yeah. And that's not red-pilled. In black families, other minority families, the instance of a single parent, usually, you know, just a, a mother in a household, has gone up consistently since social welfare well, programs. Well, have been you can even set that aside. And, and like the general stat throughout, I think it's North America, if not, it's just the states, but it's something like 43% of boys ra are raised without a biological father in place. It's insane. And right? that couldn't happen. It could not, well, not. It would very rarely happen if we didn't have these social, social welfare programs, programs right? in place. Because replace the father with the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Women, before, they would have to replace the father with another man. Right. And before government welfare programs, which are terribly inefficient and there's no incentive for people to do better because, you know, if you got private charity, you can say, okay, well, you know, Sue's husband was killed in, a, in an accident at work. Well, she's got these kids, let's all help her out. Versus, well, Bob got fired from his job for drinking again and not showing up. Fuck this guy, it's been the third time this happened. So, has it, but has the government, government size to an per, per capita exploded like over the last hundred years? Oh, sorry. Probably. You know, like the amount of government workers and employees and representatives and it's, senators and... It's ridiculous. Our right. government should be a Elliot in here. Elliot? tiny size. Well, I have a question. Yeah, that is a great segue. What do you guys think about not needing government? <laughs> uh, I don't need government. Very, they don't do anything. Because what we're so talking well. about is... Are All they do is milk my paycheck. One. They take half my shit. It's like an ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> take, right, so, take your tax rate and you'd be that more effective. Like I'm you know? trying to say... Non-compliance is our greatest gift. If everybody stopped so, paying their taxes immediately, the IRS could not possibly get everyone for it. They yeah. couldn't. Ha, Look at what point. John McAfee is doing. Right now, literally, if every single person in the United States that pays taxes... Pick which, the day and said, if you said, not paying yeah, tax anymore. Fuck The problem fuck is, you is that IRS you don't have that control as an employee because your because your because your taxes are taken from the employer, right. Work for mandated legally through the system yeah. to rob you before the money even hits your bank account. That's how much of a criminal the government is. They rob your ass before you, the money that you work for even hits your bank account. Well, we we do need government, but we need so much less of it than we have. We need government for a few basic basic things. Ultimately, the only purpose of government is to have a objective way to defend individual rights, including your property rights and your right to life, 
to provide for the national defense, and then to enforce contracts, because without that, businesses couldn't operate. Anything else is a complete waste of money. It's, out, it's, it's not constitutional, and it should be left to local city and state level. And the reason for that is anything else, if it's left to the cities and states, because we are a, we're not just one big country, we are a union of states, people have the option to move from one city to the next or one state to the next. So states and cities have to compete for citizens and taxes. They have to be efficient and they have to provide value for what they offer. But on the federal level, yeah, we were talking about city states before when we were mm -hmm. driving out to the gun range. I think, yeah. I think we talked about it too. Mm -hmm. We could to cut it back is, uh, to a tiny sliver of what it is, though, and we we'd had, all uh, be better for it. We had an old speaker, Greg Swan, uh, Sock and I know him pretty well. And he was the first man I heard say that the smallest polity, the smallest political entity, is the family. Family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Fa that, smallest form of government is two smallest people. Smallest form of government is two yeah. people. Yep. Or two even people. in a family, yep. you know, it's a that. relationship. And what comes to mind there is, you know, what's the topic of uh, the show we had the other day here, and of course, upcoming event, patriarchy. Yeah, if you male, vote for big family. government, you're basically voting to be replaced. You're voting to be out alpha. Yeah, you're voting to be out alpha by, by a big ass entity that just wants to keep growing and consuming and becoming yeah. a larger Borg. And it's like the more people that it can have reliant on its monthly subsidies and food stamps and programs, the greater its voting base will be for its policies and growth and enlargement of the government in the future, right? You know who have votes you guys for ever bigger heard governments? Of voluntarism? We know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And what do you think about people that need big, big governments, which yeah. is a lot of people because they don't want to take ownership for their own lives a lot of the time. Yeah, volunteerism, I'm familiar with it. I don't think the rest of the panel is. Mm -hmm. uh, something I looked at a while ago, I think Ron Paul was a big fan of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a theory once that if you could like legally mandate volunteerism, if that makes any sense, which <laughs> right. sounds, it sounds ridiculous, right? <laughs> yeah. So I think one of the fundamental problems, like we're talking about taxes and what a fucking ripoff they are. You know, Half of it's taken out of your paycheck if you have an employer before you even touch it. You don't even have the ability to not pay it. That's how crazy it is now, right? Yeah. I think one of the one of the fundamental problems with government right now and taxation specifically as a funding method, right? Government is one hundred percent taxpayer funded, is that it's violently enforced. Mm -hmm. It is not like when you in America when you fill out your taxes, the federal government, you have an option like a check mark to pay for like the presidential uh, campaign. You can donate like four bucks or something, like whatever the like what amount it is. Right? If it, like, people chose where all of it went, most exactly. of the stuff we don't need would be gone. Well, here's the issue too, is that if you don't pay it, it's criminal. You will literally have to pay it at gunpoint to go to jail. Yeah. IRS has like, they have like 4,000 AR-15s or something. Like they have, they have like thousands yeah, they keep and thousands of Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing because they yeah. have to serve in a whole yeah, series yeah. of things. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. It's like, why, yeah. why are you, I'm yeah. for government, like a very, Why very does the IRS amount. need a thousand AR-15s? They have more than that. And they have like millions people of People wouldn't pay them otherwise. Yeah. Do so they actually they, like force people to pay taxes at gunpoint like you suggested? They they I've, I've actually known some people yeah. that have been in situations where the govern the IRS pursued them for a while for not paying taxes. Mm -hmm. And they ignored summons, they ignored court orders and all these things, saying basically, you know what, I really don't have to pay you any of this. And their arguments are something against improper ratification of the amendment that allowed for the, the IRS to, to do this for oh, the yeah, income yeah, tax. Yeah. And these people outright resisted and ended up in armed standoff. I remember yeah. getting emails from somebody at a house where they were basically in an armed standoff. Of course, this stuff doesn't make the news. Over they don't taxes. want people to know that. Yeah, and I told him, I said, don't fucking email me in the middle of this stuff. <laughs> well, no, I said, not, don't, that's, yeah, that don't straight fucking to the FBI. send this <laughs> to me <laughs> right like, now. So most yeah, of you've ever like a very limited <laughs> amount of government, but if you yeah. don't pay it, you won't go to jail for not paying your taxes. You're gonna go to jail. At that's not freedom, man. Die. That's right. That's you not freedom. Right. I mean, I mean, yeah. like you're a slave to the system when they steal the money for taxes before it even hits your bank account. It's a very advanced form of slavery. It is. We have a Lamborghini yeah. literally in the driveway. <laughs> yeah. Do we feel like slaves? No. But if we don't pay our taxes in a long enough time span, you will have law enforcement show up at your house with guns. Yeah. And if you defend yourself, they will put a bullet right between your fucking eyes. They will kill you. Wow. Yeah. And a big part of the problem is that. A lot of the people aren't paying taxes. They're still benefiting from the taxes. And for some reason, they're still being given a say yeah. in who gets elected. Yeah, if you're not yeah, paying in, you yeah. should not have a say at all well, in who well, and how voting, it's being spent. Well, voting, voting right here used to, used to exist based on property ownership, didn't it? Right. You, you, That's like the you only could cast a vote if you had yep. done something with your life and obtained property. 
Right. Yep. Then your voice mattered. Until mm -hmm. then, you were a nobody, and you just needed to toe the line. If we went back to that, it would solve a Trump. Two things. You should either have to own land in the country to be able to vote in it or have served honorably in the military. If you haven't done one of those two things, you should have zero say in who gets elected. If we were to limit it to just those people, the vast majority of problems that we have with our government right now would go away. And right now, a <laughs> bunch of people watching are probably furious about me saying this. That's because you are the people <laughs> that are benefiting from stealing our money, a big part of our paycheck. Yeah, the big problem if is that mad, the vast majority of the, of the people that make the decisions are the people that are milking the people that are paying right. the taxes no, that don't simple. get to benefit from the decisions mm -hmm. that they make. Let me pause this and bump it to Rolo. Yeah. So Rolo, someone put in the chat that like, if you're red-pilled, you're probably not a socialist. That's not 100%. So my question is, Obviously, there are, dude, there are dudes, and I know some. I know one, me and Sock do in Orlando. This guy's like basically a communist. Hardcore Bernie Sanders fan, all that. This guy gets laid. He understands women. Yep. Yep. So what do you think, Rolo, about the guys who have been able to, I, in my opinion, compartmentalize yeah, or kind of piece down? They understand truth or? and intersexual dynamics, yes. but when it comes to freedom and personal responsibility, it's like completely, it's like rationality got completely turned well, off. There are guys who are going to be the quote-unquote natural no matter what. Okay. And that's going to be above whatever your political affiliation is. It's going to be whatever you think of sociologically. You're going to grow up in such a way, and you know what? You're not going to care. You don't have any incentives to really even think about why what you're doing is working for you, okay? Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it, okay? It's the same thing for very gorgeous, pretty girls, right? They, they don't have the incentive to uh, have the insight to really look inside themselves and say, why is it what I'm doing is working? And why am I not happy? Or why, how can I fix the problem? Because they don't, they're just simply not motivated to do something like that. So you're going to have people that are always going to be naturals who are going to say, you know what, I get it from you know, a very early age. And there's other guys who have to learn and have to struggle with it and have to fight for it. Um, for some people, it comes, it comes easier. Some people, it's, it's not because you have to get over a lot of, um, a lot of personal uh, convictions, maybe whatever you've been conditioned to. That's why we call blue pill, uh, blue pill conditioning, because from a very early age, you know, I've always said we, uh, we raise our boys as if they're defective girls. Well, those defective girls all also grow up to vote, okay? Those defective girls... They uh, cast a lot of votes. Yeah, who, who have always been told uh, you need to make uh, women, womankind, or mommy, or your teacher, or whoever, you have to make them your first order of thinking. And that's where you get guys who are like, don't worry, honey, uh, I'll, I'll take your last name instead of you taking my last name. Okay? That's when you get that, that kind of thing. But they, they are, but see here, those people, those guys are just as, just as clueless as the natural guy is. Because a guy who's like, uh, who's been brought up to, uh, like, like, take, take somebody like, say, Terry Crew. Cruz for a minute. Good right? example. Okay. Yeah. Terry Cruz. Who's Terry Cruz? Yeah, he's the he's a he's an athlete, right? Or yeah, he's a, football, yeah. Oh, he's, he's a big ball. Yeah, ball, yeah. Black yeah. Guy. He was he's a black like, guy that was in the Gillette commercial. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I know yeah. Terry Cruz is. And he is yeah. essentially he, he is a, that Senate hearing, essentially but, he is a tool mm -hmm. of his militant feminist wife. And he'll go on uh, all of these talk shows and go. We need to. He'll, he'll say. He'll he'll sit before Congress, I think, and he'll say. First Me Too he, movement. Yeah, for male the support yeah, for the in the athletic so male role, saying that. I was sexually because sexually harassed see, because and assaulted. Because they see that as a means to solving their reproductive problems. Okay, if I get behind Me Too. I'm going to be able to breed. They're gonna, they're, the women are going to like me enough because I'm identifying with women because that's what we tell all our boys is mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to identify with the feminine. Be their friend. You need to get, uh, get in touch with your emotional side and your, your feminine side. So that's what they do. Um, but for the guys that you're talking about, there are always going to be alphas and betas within different contexts. Within any tribe. Yeah, within any, any tribe. So you can mm -hmm. go into the most hardcore uh, socialist groups that you, you can imagine, and there's going to be an alpha there who's mm -hmm. nailing all the chicks yep. in that thing because, uh, once again, you take the mechanics of everything that I've written about and you put that into a different context. You put that into a social context. The mechanics don't change. The only thing that changes is the paradigm, is, is the, the context of that. So whether it's, you know, uh, the, what, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez or whatever yeah. and her democratic socialists, 
I'll guarantee you there's like, she, she can probably like point out two or three guys that she's probably nailed within her own political party because she was hot for that guy. Why? Because those are the alpha dudes, right? Those are the guys that she, she wants to have sex with. By the and way, those are the guys that don't. She, so. she calls her boyfriend her partner. Yeah, I yeah. I, I, have you seen pictures of the guy? No, I can uh, imagine. Go look up pictures of the guy. He is exactly what you would imagine him to be. <laughs> exactly what you would imagine him to be. Exactly what you would imagine. Uh, yeah. I had a and now everybody in the chat's gonna go apartment. Google this guy. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we, got a, we got a ten dollars super chat yeah. Yeah, from uh, Redman Anon. I've seen this guy before. It's about RSD Tyler. Isn't RSD Tyler red pill though? He no. does talk about lover provider dynamic. No. Talks no. about the Disney fantasy. Talks about looks are just a part of it, etc. Guess I'm not sure how he is purple pill. Rolo, Rich, anybody want this? I'll let Rolo hit it. I think. I think that. he. I think. A guy like Owen, a guy like Mystery, and a guy like, uh, I mean, remember, that's, this is this old guard pickup artistry, guys. That's what, mm. that's what they're, mm. they've moved over into, um, into really uh, success porn, is what they've done. They've moved over into the Tony Robbins, let's get up and, and uh, bounce around the room, and they don't really have much substance to them. They don't have nuts and bolts. Um, they have they have a lot of hype and they have a lot of feel good. That's fine, but they don't. At the end of the day, it's it's kind of like a big nothing burger is what it ends up being. Mm. Uh, is he um, is he red pill? Is he blue pill? I don't think so. Um, for the same reason, I don't think mystery is either. Um, mystery is still to this day suicidal because he's still trying to make red pill uh, the red pill work for his blue pill fantasies. So he can learn just like we were talking about about this. You know, studly socialist guy. He learns yeah. how to do one thing really good, but he doesn't understand how the car runs. He can drive the car, but he couldn't rebuild the car. He couldn't put it back mm -hmm. together. He could, if something went wrong with the car, he couldn't rebuild it. He'd have to take it somewhere and he'd, he'd get rid of that car and get another car, right? Yeah, you even that, saw Neil, Neil Strauss write about this in the Yeah, game. Neil Strauss is another, is yeah, a, no, another no, no, guy no. who is, who ha, at one point understands game. Just because you understand game does not make you red pill and it does not make you blue, well, or blue pill for that matter. Does it even mean you understand women? Yeah, it's, those two things are mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. So uh, just because you are very good at scripts, just because you are very good at, um, uh, what is it, uh, calibrating, that's what the, that's yeah. a big one. Yeah, you're good at calibrating, you're good at, uh, so you have high social intelligence. That simply does, that. that's great. You know how to get laid, but you mm -hmm. don't know how to live with women. You don't know how to look for dangerous women. You don't know how to yeah. deal with a, a borderline personality. You don't, have, you don't know those kinds of things because you've never had the incentive to really actually study those mm -hmm. things. I think that if you look at the lifestyles, the, the actual real lifestyles of somebody like, like Owen, um, you'll see just how blue pill they are. Like for instance, like uh, Prince Harry, everybody jumped all down my ass for, for when I, I said Prince Harry is blue pill and he's gonna end up probably putting a noose around his neck because, because he's blue pill and because he's doing everything I would expect a blue pill guy to do in a relationship that he is in and she is owning his ass and isolating him and doing everything possible to to keep very him. publicly too. She's very all, all yeah. within yeah. the first year. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There was no. I'm going to bet he goes with sleeping ever. pills. Well, because yeah, that, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But then people will say, well, he used to fly helicopters and he was a marine, a royal marine, or something yeah. like that. And I'm like, that. I I know so many guys in the military yeah. that I would yeah. also say yeah. are very very blue pill. So just because you know how to get laid does not necessarily mean that you know the nature of women and you don't you know what you know can help you live a better life by knowing like intersexual dynamics and the mechanics that go with that. So I think that maybe it's, I'm, I'm not saying they, you know, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, I haven't seen it, okay? I haven't seen it from him at all. All I see is, I see a lot of, of practice and no theory. And then I see a lot of guys who are all theory and no practice. There's, uh, I always say that the, the red pill and game are like symbiotic, okay? Uh, without game, without practice, without going out there and, and doing it and practicing what you've learned from the red pill, you, you're, all you are is just, all you are is a robot. You're what uh, Neil Strauss would call a social robot, social robot right? Yeah. Um, if, you, uh, if all you're about is theory and you're just sitting in here and you're just being a keyboard jockey the whole time, you're, so, you're afraid to go outside, all you're doing is just being, you're just living with, with theory all the time. You know, when I first found your website in 2015, before I got properly introduced to it like a year and a half later, mm -hmm. I was actually, I had one of my employees at the time looking for websites like yours, like new Manosphere content, because I was frustrated that the pickup community had completely failed to develop a unifying theory of any degree. It was just the pickup community in 2015 was like this like leftover mishmash of shit from the 2000s. And they didn't, know, they didn't know why it worked. 
Yeah, no one knew you know, why so, anything so you worked. So you guys do really stupid shit, to yeah, try yeah. and fail, well, that, and then it works, and they don't know why. You, you want to know how I wrote the rational males because I was looking at forums like SoSwap and forums like Alt Fast Seduction mm -hmm. and Mystery Method and stuff, and I was looking at that. In fact, that's what prompted me to actually get into it because I was studying behavioral psychology at the time, and I go, "What he's talking about right there is operant conditioning, right? right. Or, if it, or it's you know, it's positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement." I'm, I'm looking at all, this, and they don't understand why it works. But they don't care if it, if it, you know, again, just turn the TV on. And as long as the TV turns on, that's all they care about. They don't want to rebuild the TV. I wanted to rebuild the TV. I love so Elliot's thing. Good. He said girls just want to take selfies and charge their phone. Right. Yeah. The selfies thing I got, the charge no, they don't. They don't want to rebuild the phone. <laughs> they don't want to charge, code, charge, you charge. Know? Yeah. Charge it and mm -hmm. post a selfie. Yeah. I want I do want to get back to this one part, though. I, I understand, like, the, 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 the principal question you're asking is which political ideology most closely aligns with what we see as uh, red pill awareness, okay? Obviously, that's not a, a militant, progressive, liberal, le I don't even call it liberal because, you know, if you talk to like somebody like David Ru Dave Rubin, they will, he will say that he is uh, a classical liberal, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, Which is what I was for a very long time, but I voted for Trump. Right, I voted for Obama in the in the in the two years that he was there, but I'm like I'm one of Jack Murphy's uh, Democrats to deplorables, and now I've I've switched because uh, I because the party left me. I didn't leave the party, right? right? And I see this now, and I and I look at it, and I go, well, as to who I am today, who best reflects those? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I didn't vote for for Trump. I voted against Hillary because I didn't want her in there. And if there's any woman that that runs this year. She's not getting my vote either, just simply because I don't see it's too a woman. dangerous. Yeah, it's too dangerous, and I don't see a woman because I believe in the sisterhood of Boralis, right? Yeah. I believe that women will never vote against their own interests. And you listen to Turd Flinging Monkey; he I says agree. this all the time, mm -hmm. which is, you know, women will only ever vote for themselves. They will only ever vote for the sisterhood, no matter what that is. And if they can get free stuff, they're going to get free stuff. So, what do you think about that notion that the MGTOWs talk about, where they say just take women's voting rights away? I mean. I think as a solution, it would probably work, but how, like, how would you even go about that? I agree. I, I, I 100% like, think... How is that a solution? When guys say that, they go, yeah, let's just... Are you ready to take women's vote rights away? Yes, I am. How are we going to do that? Yeah, like, Tell me how we're going to do that. Like, what's the plan? You, you have that. Has anybody presented a lab? Monster societal collapse. I've done this no. once before when, when Drew mentioned this at, at the, the Red Man Group at 21Con. So the MGTOWs jumped to that as an easy solution, and I'm actually very skeptical. Obviously, like, how are you going to do that? Second of all, if you actually manage to pull that off, the fucking backlash you would inspire with that would be like hell. Like to me, that would be that would. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Like it's just thousand percent. So in the short term, useless. but as society yeah. rapidly improved over the following decades, people would be yeah. like, "Yeah, you know." Yeah, but they would have idea. to hold Wait. for decades to see the improvement. That's yeah. right. Right. Well, you, it can't be done. Though, that it's you can't keep swinging the pendulum back and forth every yeah. four years and take but, away your yeah. votes. No, it couldn't they, be. It have to be indirect. They keep coming back to that and they keep throwing that out. They're like, let's let's take women's rights away. Okay. Well, again, you know, of course, what we say. You know, go Voting's ahead and do not that. a right, though. It's a privilege. Well, okay, but so, exactly. Well, if you make the privilege to align phrase with it like that, property, that then we can't and choices. shouldn't see, take anybody's see, rights. But see, that is a, to, to, right. to say let's take women's rights away. That is a cop out. And you know why that's a cop out? Because they know that they, that it, there's happen. there's two choices. We I take we take away women's yeah. rights, or the whole system goes to hell. Mm -hmm. Right? What sounds better to you? Well, I think they want taking the whole away, yeah taking away women's rights. Right? But guess what's going to really happen? The whole system's going to go to hell. Yes. That's what they—that's what they're trying to avoid right. by saying, "Let's take away women's rights." No, we're fucked. That's yes. it. Okay, we're <laughs> we're we yes. are we are totally okay. fucked. I'm and you're not going to take women's rights away because there are there are there are more alpha or there are more betas out there that will fight you on that mm -hmm. than than anything. That women won't even have to fight the battle. The men allies. will fight the battle. Eighty-five percent men are betas. There's yes. a lot of yeah. thirsty, dehydrated yeah. white knights out there that would fight that battle happily I'm for my lady. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm also very so. Drew Bay mentioned earlier, like prop, owning property, serving in the military, honorably, honorably yeah. contributing to the tax base. So actually, I've seen Black Pigeon Speaks do some awesome videos and Stefan Molyneux videos on gender, voting patterns, women voting for socialism, men voting for freedom. The Libertarian yes. Party in America is like 70% male. Independent of gender, though, I'm very skeptical that the fundamental problem is actually gender and biology. I think it's more something like owning property or even something as simple as making voting contingent on contributing one fucking dollar of tax every mm -hmm. year. 
You either contribute one dollar positive net positive to the tax base. So you get to cast vote. a vote. You can vote. But if, if you're, you're a recipient negative, of free recipient. shit, you don't right. get to yeah. vote. And even government dollar, employees. Negative. Exactly. If you're in welfare, if you're in food stamps, well, that's no a vote. step closer in the right direction, I think, because you're going to have people yeah. cast mm -hmm. votes and that I think support. That push and it's aligning country. their interests with what their voting patterns yeah. are. Yeah. Exactly. And so, yeah. for example, Mary Frances was a you know stand up liberal. But when you start having her interest in the family, realizing how much of my paycheck is taken out going somewhere else, you know, she saw that number and was like, what the fuck? Mm. I mean, like, is, and she's like, how often does this happen? Is that monthly? I mean, no, that's bi-monthly. That's happening yeah. twice a month. Well, this is a, this is a yeah. repel thing that's talked about quite a bit uh, more on the boards and stuff. Right. That women who get married and have babies, all of a sudden they vote conservative and shit. Right. It's like this yeah. rapid, oh, it, 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 they don't want to preserve that. Instead of saying, probably not a lot of single mom how, how do you put the value back in the family structure right? that's right. red-pilled base that respects men, respects masculinity, respects the historical behavior behavioral patterns of human creatures, both male and female, mm -hmm. and make that work in a civilized society such as ours. And we still haven't figured that out. Well, and I'll tell you, you want, I was actually, when we were on the boat, I was telling, uh, I was telling uh, Elliot this, is that women tend to be more collectivist. They tend to be more socialist, mm -hmm. okay? For lack of a better term, let's just say collectivist here because I, I don't want to apply politics to it just yet, but they're more collectivist. Men tend to be more merit-based i.e. More, more capitalist, more, uh, more focused on your performance because we have a burden of performance. Women do not have that burden of performance. They just are. Men must become. We're focused on the right? individual. Right. Well, the reason for that, and I, I was telling them, is that there's... They we like to compete and measure as well. Yeah, we do. Well, yeah. here's the thing is um, women, the way that they evolved was they had to stay, you know, we evolved from hunter-gatherer societies and women stayed together and they... they had to rely on each other. They had to communicate with each other where the men were off, you know, trying to bring back a big old woolly mammoth or some shit, okay? So they, um, they would have to be there. In, they would have to cooperate and organize because they had to go collect. They had to, okay, you're going to take care of the babies. You're going to go and do this. Oh, it looks like you're going to be fertile pretty soon. I got a great guy for you. That, you know, there's a matchmaker thing. There's the reproductive aspects of it. But all of that comes down to wanting to, uh, to have a, an equal base for everybody that is in the woman tribe, whereas the man tribe is out doing something differently. So what happens is they end up being like a, one of these experiments I was telling him about is they have done these experiments where they will take a, a certain amount of money or resources and they will allot it to a, a group of women and they will, find, they will see how they go and they distribute it. And women will almost, almost uniquely just go and distribute uh, money or whatever the resource is Equally amongst the amongst that group. Shit, Whereas gotta, when you do the same thing, I would. Who's got a huge super chat? We'll, we'll get to it. When you do the same thing with men, men will take that, those resources and they will dish it out merit-wise. You did a better mm -hmm. job. You brought down the woolly mammoth. You threw the spear. You <laughs> carried it back. You know this. They will give. They will give out just enough. Uh, as based on whatever your performance is, and that when we see societies that are more. Uh, feminine primary, when they are gynocratic, when they are uh, what I would call the female primary social order, mm -hmm. when, which is what we are in now, and we have been in this since the, uh, since the sexual revolution, that is why you see us leaning really towards leftist and left-leaning left socialist collectivist uh, like even Alexandria Cortez, right? Social Democrat. That's why you're looking a socialist Democrat. That's why you're seeing this more this more socialist thing. Everything you guys have been talking about about uh, distributing and taxes and, and voting and stuff like that. The reason we have, we're even discussing this is because we have we have standardized on that collectivist female style government. And this is also what happens when women get into male spaces. They will turn it from a merit-based space, which is a male space, into a female-based space, which is based on like you get one and you get one and you get one and we're all going to be collectivists and we're all going to be equal mm -hmm. about it. And that's what fucks up companies, big companies, when they get into work culture. When work culture shifts from being primarily male over to primarily female, it fucks up the dynamic. And that's why you see, you see companies work culture completely change when, when it's primarily women. So that's something to think about because right now I see that one of the reasons that, that we have the resistance and we have the female, the women's march and all this other shit that's going Pussy on hats, right now. Yeah. What is that? We're, they're all wearing the same uniform. They're all yeah. wearing the same pink hat and they all carry the same placards and they all look alike. Okay. Because that is that collectivist mentality for them. So mm -hmm. you want to get to that chat? Real quick? Yeah, let's get to that chat in a second. But Elliot, you made some controversial decisions in your business with the events lately. I don't know how long, a few months ago or whatever it was, you actually stopped flying women into your events. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a little bit about why that was and how that, because it sounds very related. 
the mm -hmm. dynamics have changed. For Chris that. Von Eric, thank you very much for that sixty dollars super chat. Yeah, man. We'll get to the super chats in a second. Read them out. Mm -hmm. Well, the main thing was that the men were distracted. Yeah, they couldn't help but be distracted. So when there were women there, uh, they would virtue signal. Yeah. Yes. How you know? Be that guy that gets the attention from the girl. I'm not like these other guys. And it was a lot of. It was. I was actually a little ashamed. It was a lot of beta activity, a lot of beta behavior. Cringe. Right? We're working to. Yeah, very cringy. We're working together to make ourselves stronger versions of ourselves. But then here I see them. You know, following the bait, biting the apple, bowing down, kowtowing, and being beta with the girls, and. Uh, and I saw the, the women, uh, they would take advantage of that. They, would, they enjoyed that. You know? And we started getting women that I think were coming for that. They realized they were going to be... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, you just created a market. Yeah. yeah. And so... Uh, a niche. You know, I decided to allow women in first because I recognized that it would bring more men. That was my mindset. <laughs> so, hey. And it worked. We bring girls, <laughs> more guys will come. Yeah. And it was doing really well, but it didn't take long for me to see the flaw in that. That was a yeah. mistake that I made. Uh, particularly when we have men that are you know, making bad decisions yeah. you know, with these women that are showing up. So in order to do the work that men got to do, we got to create a space that's for men. We can't do this in a collectivist way with women. We're not, we're not ourselves. It doesn't, it doesn't matter who you are or how strong you try to be. When there's a woman in the room, there's a shift in behavior. Mm. We've been conditioned that way. And so uh, the big decision has been to, yeah, work exclusively with men, yeah. Yeah, yeah I really, uh, I was surprised to hear that. I didn't know that. It was pretty cool to hear that. That's you impressive. made in male space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. How, how do you yeah. develop yeah. a uniqueness yeah. and, and celebrate that uniqueness yeah. and develop it when you have to include the other parties? Right. You know, you're, you're, you're watering it down. You're not able to actually foment the mm -hmm. elements that actually create that uniqueness. Mm -hmm. Well, you look, women have all their kinds of space, safe yeah, right, spaces. Right, They're creating right, them all over the place. Right. And men leave them alone. We don't see men trying to be Girl Scouts. Bah, it's great. Girls, go. Do your thing. Mm -hmm. But we have this encroach upon space that's been created for men. Uh, boy Scouts don't exist any longer. I think you mean Scouts. Scouts <laughs> don't exist anymore yeah. because girls need to be a part of it. Uh, and I think we've forgotten how to be with one another outside of the you know, drinking beer and, and telling jokes sort of space. You know, uh, That's cool and that's great, but we learned under pressure. We learned about one another under pressure. You know, anybody who's played football or was in the military, yeah. you understand that those men become family not because they like each other, <laughs> not because they're friendly with one another. In fact, we, <laughs> you know, we rib each other and yeah. give each well, other a hard time, and that's great. Load, because we're but, testing what kind yeah. of men are around, and, and it becomes an order. That's why, you know, the order of men, it's men create an order. A hierarchy. Right, yeah, yeah. order. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Uh, I and think it's super important. You, you talk about the culture of st uh, steel, you know, of... Uh, uh, so, hang on. I got to hit some super chats here. Yeah. Oh, we get, we're going to shut down. We got uh, first a $5 one real quick. Uh, Fimon Min. He said earlier, just look at the Amish and the Muslim no-go no zones in Europe. Mm -hmm. That's how you take away uh, women's rights. It's happening right now. We also got a huge super chat from Chris Von Eric and $60. Thanks, man. It's one of the biggest I've ever seen yeah. on Redman Group. You men are the voices that need to need to heard. I am proud to support the content, and my goal is to one day speak at Twenty One Convention. Right. Fuck yeah, man! Thank you. And by the way, the way you do that is you start broadcasting your own story. Show us what you yeah. got. Yeah. 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 yeah, show us yeah. what you got. Get in the ring. Say what you got to say. Yeah. yeah, build. It's it's a hierarchy. Exactly. Elliot was just talking was just talking about mm -hmm. order and hierarchy. The speakers. I'm building a hierarchy of speakers and content and ideas and brands. These men have built their, themselves into that process by producing content. Whether it's a blog, a YouTube channel, a book, a blog, or a YouTube, you know, all this stuff. That's how exactly Rich said. Build the content. Demonstrate what you can do. That's how you get here. The next one is from Conk. It's a $10 one. Thank you. Conk's awesome. He's always around. Yeah. yeah. He's on all of ours. Rolo. Women vote for the sisterhood loyalty, but it all goes to shit when it's individual mate competition. Mm -hmm. Women sexually intimidated by other women will go no holds barred. Yeah, he's right. Yeah, female, yeah, female, 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 female competitions. Yeah, they're gross. But I mean, when when it Intersex. when it comes to when it comes to like the oppression Olympics, right? Whenever yeah. that's why I always talk about the sisterhood as it tr it transcends religion, it transcends 
politics. It transcends race. Okay, if you if you're a woman, then it's like, hey, sister. It's his own or, mental yeah. point of origin itself. Right? Yeah, it, in in a sense. But you have to, that what he's talking about when there's of course there's intersexual competition mm. all over the place, but that's within that group. When that group is attacked from the outside, that's when they sort of circle the, the board circle the wagons. Yeah. Yeah. I missed uh, one super chatter from Ken Wilder, 1999. Thank you, sir. If women's rights aren't repealed, then at what point will this massive shit test end? <laughs> I, on, I only care because feminism is corrupting every facet of the West. I agree. Must we be invaded to realize our failure or until everything fails? I think, I think the shit needs to hit the fan. That's what, that's we what need a full-on reset. Like, it's like when your computer freezes up and it's not working properly. Sweden is you probably going to be reset. one of the tests. Sure, also, it's, it's not a right. Voting is not a right. Voting ought to be considered a privilege. And I think it's important that we phrase it as that because when you start yeah. talking about taking away rights, that's... It was designed as a, that, as a function yeah. like jury duty. Uh, and, and the origins of America, anyway, up till yeah. whenever the 1800s or whatever, and that changed. It, it should be considered yeah. a privilege. It's something that you should have to earn. Rights are inherent. You have, you just by virtue of being a living human, you right. have rights. Right. But voting is something that you should not have a say if you don't have skin in the game. Yeah. If and you're yeah, not part yeah. of the risk, it's a privilege that comes with that. It has to be earned. And it's, I think it's absolutely essential that we stop saying the right to vote yeah. and call right. it voting privileges. Well, it used to come with responsibility, too. It was intimately tied to that. Yeah. It should never you, have changed. You have just described exactly what I was saying about the differences between how women govern and how men govern. When women are together and they're organizing, yeah. again, they are socialist and they, everybody, everybody voting for voice. women mm -hmm. is a right. Everybody gets to everybody gets to do that. Voting for men is a privilege that you get if you perform something, if you do something, if you throw in, if you do, if you're actually contributing to the mm. to the greater good of of that group. Whereas you women, bear it's, responsibility, and that's and that's and you know the MGTOWs got this one right too. You know credit where it's due. It's mm. like they will never vote against their own their own capacity to vote. They're never going to sit. They're never going to vote against or vote for something. That you're just you're talking about right now. They're never. We're never going to go back to that merit-based version of voting because we live in a feminine primary social order. I have a question. Do you guys think that we're at the point of no return? I don't. No. Like, so I, I have a. I, can I this like be the, fixed? Yeah, I like what you said a minute ago because you you said the shit needs, needs to hit the fan, and in most instances or the views of that, I would kind of agree, but I think there's one out, and that well, fundamentally, Ron Paul used to say, for example, in running in 2008, 2012. That tyranny sows the seeds of its own destruction. Mm. Uh, tyranny, evil, all these things. So my opinion, the presidency of the United States, one of the three branches of government, executive, legislative, and judicial, the presidency has become like superpowered over the past like 50, 60 years. It's, gone, it's gotten really out of control. And with guys like Bill Clinton and George Bush and these uh, globalist puppets that just do what they're told, that's a big fucking problem. But I think now what we're seeing with Trump is the minute you get a real American who does whatever the fuck he wants, when the fuck he wants, in that super-powered executive position, he's literally the CEO of the country, of the federal government. That, I think, is what we're seeing. We're in the middle of a revolution, in my opinion. Well, it sounds a like he's gearing revolution. up to build a wall anyway by declaring it a national yeah, yeah, yeah. emergency. Yeah. Right? I mean, look, it's right. not just the wall. It's, it's everything happen. he's done since he's gone in office. The presidency was overpowered, mm -hmm. and the globalists, you know, shit. Overpowered was, by the globalists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did it on purpose to yeah. control everything else, but now that's the, the, the wheels have fallen off, and they're fucking... Mainstream media is freaking out. Mainstream culture is freaking out because you have someone in a position to actually do something. But is that enough? But is that enough? It might be. Does he have enough time to actually accomplish what he was hoping to accomplish? We're going to find out. All right. People give me shit all the time for saying this, but I'm going to say it anyways. Um, <laughs> back in, was it, 1847 is when Seneca Falls happened. And that's when we decided that, or women decided that they were going to have feminism, right? They came out with the articles of feminism. It's Seneca, yeah. Seneca I forget the lady who wrote it on um, I've always said this, is that there were never any waves of feminism. There has always been one kind of feminism, and it has always been a, a hate movement, and it has also been a uh, supremacism movement. It's always been a push for more and more. I mean, when everybody asks you what do women want, the answer is always more. Okay, And so... Hmm. So if you look at this from like 1847, then feminism is interrupted by, let's see, the Civil War in the 1860s. Mm -hmm. Then again, feminism is interrupted by World War I. 
Then feminism is again gets up and oh, it's interrupted by World War II. And then finally, when we get into the 60s, 1960s, we have hormonal birth control and we basically have yeah. handed over the birthing process, the reproductive, human reproductive process is in the 100% control, authority control of women right now. Mm -hmm. You guys will say, well, you can put it, you can wrap your dick up with a condom and you, you have to take some responsibility for that. Yeah, but the thing is, is once that woman is pregnant, all of your right, your rights cease, okay? You have no control over really the rest of your life. Whatever she wants to do, she's gonna do. Whether you wanna keep that kid or you don't wanna have that kid, she has that right. And look at what has happened since we have unfettered hypergamy. Since we have given women that right, we've also unfettered hypergamy by saying, don't worry, ladies. Now, if you have sex, you don't have to worry about getting pregnant all the time. All you gotta do is take this little pill and you'll be good, right? So since then, since the sexual revolution, <laughs> what have we seen happen? We have seen... Are they trying to give those pills to men now? And no. Yeah, yeah, there's no, 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 no. Yeah, Apparently there's pills no, no, no. They are. Well, well here's out. the thing, real quick. I had a guy, to, I had a guy tell yeah. me that like we, have, we spend more money on... Um, uh, what is it on, on abortion or something like that? Right, then rather than spending money on birth control for men, right? Yeah, I, I, I thought that was kind of interesting. But I, I, I understand like, it's more than the space program, yeah. Well, look, look yeah. at what we've done though. So, we have, more, we have, than yeah, more than the space we program, yeah, on abortions, abortions yeah. and now abortions wow. we can have abortions right up to 60 seconds before the, the baby is born. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we shouldn't be paying for that, just got released uh, this week, yeah, right? All that, yep. but see, look at all the things that have happened since like that's profound, man. Unfettered hypergamy is exactly the result of that. Yeah, yeah. Dude, well, that's they are working on a male that? pill. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They're working on a male pill. Yeah, except that fucks up your nuts or something. It it will absolutely well, it shut you kill down. your testosterone. Here's the problem with that though. Yeah. Imagine if there was a pill, and especially if this is over the counter, that would destroy your testosterone, the potential for abuse of something like that. Spiking if people, public things and yeah. if people could just get a hold of it, yeah, what they could do with that, and I would not. You I won't even talk about all the things that could be Yeah. Well, Little plastic bottles. Oh, the yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. all the phytoestrogens yeah. yes. and, and the xenoestrogens. I mean, we're 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 take a quick commercial break from our fan sponsors. We are fan funded. We got some super chats from BJ Tucker Five. Give it to BJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I asked this uh, ten dollars. Thank you. I asked this tongue in cheek, but some presume that the end game of the red pill is The Handmaid's Tale, a Hulu like original show or whatever. Any truth to at least a lesser extent of that world, or just ludicrous? Well, that's the opposite side of this that I wanted to talk about as well. So you're talking about which political party, which political ideology most closely aligns with the red pill thing. Okay, so it obviously isn't the leftist side of the thing. I think that we're pretty much agreed on that. But is it the right side? Is it the conservative side? Is I don't think the, the conservative side conservative is side? the answer, but it is the closest to the truth that is going to have any now, I, influence or I, impact. I only agree with that up to a point because right now there are guys watching this who t would tell you that the only valid sex, the only legitimate sex that you can have is reproductive sex and anything else is a drug addiction. Mm. Meaning that you will jerk off until you can't see anymore. We have uh, ubiquitous free online porn. Why is that? Because that's, we've, un we've unfettered the male uh, sexual imperative by, by offering up pornography as easy mm. as it is. Mm. Um, they will tell you that, uh, you, I mean, you guys already know my, my my reasons for not being into traditional conservatism, but thank you. Yeah, I have a comment that I could kind of share in this. I think you'll like a lot, Rollo. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to Dr. Sean Smith, one of the you know fellow RMG mm -hmm. guys, to, uh, 21 Con speakers, a few weeks ago, and he asked me what I thought about TradCon beliefs, traditional conservatism, things like that. Mm -hmm. And if I was TradCon, I said no. But when I look at TradCon beliefs versus what the shit we see right now, mm -hmm. they're infinitely more rational than what we have now. Mm -hmm. Even so, they're not perfect. And for a fact, we can see that they led to where we are today. Mm -hmm. America used to be, in, say, the 40s and 50s, a lot more, they had way different beliefs than we do now. That was better, but it wasn't perfect. Why? Well, we're here right now. Whatever holes and weaknesses those things had, they led to where we are today. So when I say my speeches at the convention and when I talk about the future is masculine, that's what I mean. We have to build a better future that's not just a rep replica of the 1950s. Rolla talks a lot about the, uh, you know, Tratcons want a time machine. They don't want the truth. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board with Rolla on that. 
Like I like a lot of Tradcon stuff, but I know it's not perfect. I know we need to build something better. The same way this country was founded by building something better than what we had. It's the best thing the world's ever seen. Mm -hmm. So we need to figure out what that is. And I think we're in the middle of figuring that out. Well, if you, if we were to say, okay, the, the answer is to take away women's, women's rights. Okay. Well, let's just say that maybe that's going to be something that's going to stab off disaster. Imagine what you're, imagine set, telling that to a woman who was a traditional conservative. Mm -hmm. If what's, you, what's she going to say? If you say, you know what? Sorry, baby, but if we're going to turn the ship around, we're going to have to take away your rights. And I know you voted for Trump, but you know, sorry, but that's the way it is. What's she going to say? I've had conversations with friends in public spaces about this, and I've seen absolute horrified looks. Mm -hmm. from. I remember having a conversation about this with a friend of mine. We were in the grocery checkout mm -hmm. um, and just terrified looks nobody said anything but just but i've also had conversations with some women about this of course i never phrase it as a right i would never take away anybody's rights but voting is a privilege women shouldn't yeah you're right you do have to stop calling it a right yeah right you and, have to change the language and first. i've explained yeah. it too and, and the way Update i usually put it is imagine you've got a group of maybe 50 people on an island half men half women but only about 20 of them are of you know adult age, you get the bunch below useful. that are yeah, able body yeah. useful. You got ten men, you've got ten women, you got a bunch of older men and you've got a bunch of children that can't really do anything. And you have to survive. You have wild animals that the group has to be protected against. They're not going to value the opinions of the children. Yeah. And security and, and all this. They and might said, consult, but you don't get you don't get to cast a vote. Yeah. Totally agree. The pe you're going to be reliant on the people who are capable of fighting off the animals and doing the hard work. Those are the people that are going to be at risk, though, doing this. So however it gets done should be up to them. They are the ones that are putting their necks on the line for the rest of the group, so they should be able to decide. If you're sitting back at home safe and you aren't the one that's out there would doing you it, you shouldn't like be have, able to have a say. I w yeah, I would the say ideal so. sort of I scenario? My, yeah, okay. The thing I would say is that I mean, we an, don't ideal, have that an right ideal scenario is great, but I'm just what I'm saying is I, I think that it is a mistake to think that traditional conservatism is any different than, than the leftist side um, when it comes to um, the rights of women, when it, comes to, when, when it comes to fundamental red pill beliefs or red pill truths that, you know, that we've, you know, we've gone from being, like when I, on my first, my first speech at the 2017 uh, 21 convention, I did a speech called uh, Hypergamy Micro to Macro, okay? This is the macro side of that, okay? Now we're talking about um, where we have gone from like pickup artistry all through our personal lives, how to have a better marriage, and now we're talking about things on a social scale, mm. okay? Um, just what I said before, the sisterhood Uber Alice, I would say it is almost even more intense in the conservative side of the, of the spectrum. I would say women will say, you, you will ask a conservative, you will ask a conservative woman. Oh, it's just as intense. 100%. Yeah. You will ask a conservative woman, say, are you a yeah. feminist? And they'll go, Oh no, I'm not a feminist. And you say, okay, we're going to take away your right to vote or your privilege to vote, whatever. They will lose their fucking minds because they are, there is, there is no, actually nobody in this room and nobody watching this and no woman, you know, in society right now who has been born after 1965 that hasn't had feminism in some way influence the way that they think. So even if you, like, all these people say, well, you know, uh, women don't really identify as being feminists these days. I'm like, that's bullshit. Who cares? It's meaningless right now yeah. because you were brought up to believe in all of this stuff because it was in your schools, it was in your Disney shows, it was in your music. It's uh, Listen to Beyonce, okay? Every oh, I'm a feminist. You know, fe we don't think of those when we're saying, when somebody's asking you, are you a feminist? We don't think about the influence that that song had on us. Well, I gotta tell you, when I found your work, I was amazed at how much feminism had impacted me in ways I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. I scary. Hate, I hate it's it. everywhere. So if it's it impacted everywhere. you to that degree. Feminism before I found your book. And mm -hmm. then I'm reading it, I'm like, well, we've, 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 we have, we have done, yeah, yeah. <laughs> looking back and thinking about the things, the way that you thought about things previously, mm -hmm. the things you've said and done and we come because of that programming <laughs> and thinking back now, holy fuck, what the hell was mm -hmm. wrong with me mm -hmm. that I would have even considered saying something like that? Like, well... Hey, you want to go out shooting? Oh, I got to see if you know, my wife... Check it with the boss. Check it with the boss. Why the right. fuck... 
you're asleep. Why would why you, think, would you that? Even think right. that? But no. you, do but I, you do think, I want to? you know, why you think that? Because you were brought up and you were conditioned by the blue pill to think that way, to be yeah. pre-whipped. So, uh, so just uh, just to say that, like, and I'm I'm just again, I'm playing devil's advocate here. I think the sisterhood Uber Alice it transcends religion. I'm I'm writing a book on it right now about religion and just how assimilated mainstream religions have become by feminism. Here's an idea: Uh, politics, race, you name it. The sister, and and I mean that in the sincerest way when it comes to to politics. We we've had several shows or topics of discussion here on this show about uh, red pill women. So, mm-hmm. I mean, how does that factor in to the conservative side of the spectrum then? If we're going to say there's no such thing as a red pill woman. Yeah, I was going to say, is there, is there a, a vacuum here for a political yes. organization yes. that's red pilled? <laughs> call it, there needs something to be something call it the red new. party. There needs to be something new. I, 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 I thought. I think if we followed the Constitution, we'd be pretty. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Well, you yeah. think? Should we do yeah, that? Yeah. Might, yeah. might be something. Yeah, maybe, like, close maybe like call it the Constitutional Party. Propertarianism. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen him. I, I have a uh, thought on this that I think the country when they was founded, the founding fathers talked a lot about how they hated political parties and they were surprised they were forming and stuff like right. that. Well, that, well that's yeah. why they split that's off why, from England. Like, even like, that's why they left the British Empire. Paradigm that was not intended. For our mm-hmm. country to begin with, right. so we're talking about vote, vote. Who should not vote? Really, uh, I don't think the founders wanted us to vote for any of these evil parties. Yeah. And the fact that we've got such a large federal government really transcends anything they ever expected okay. for us to have small, localized, state-governed uh, a weak government. Government. Yeah, a weak but, central government with a huge. Now we got a huge central government with a huge army. The states are dying off. And the states and it's are got a away. massive addiction They'd to death, probably too. already be <laughs> shooting. Look at MAGA, though. I mean, MAGA, this is maybe a hell of a statement, to, even on this panel, but when I see, like, the modern Rep- Republican Party, the MAGA movement within the Republican Party that Trump's leading, and then the Democrats going, like, anti-free speech, super pro-war, they're war... You know, liberals now, 10 years ago, were anti-war. Now they're pro-war, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's wild the way things are turning. I think they're just... Contrarian. Anything well, that Trump says, they're automatically oh, yeah. Yeah. just yeah. unthinking. Yeah, yeah it's, it's tribal. It's thing. tribalism is what it is. What's striking me is that you're seeing one party, you're seeing two parties in America, the two major parties. One is going pro America, the other one's going anti America. Mm-hmm. It's That's not just really un America, it yeah. it's fucking hostile. It's aggressive. It's censorship. It's anti free speech. It's anti gun. It's anti freedom. It's, it's pro debt. It's fucking crazy. Did you see that video? It's been going around my Twitter feed, and it's this ball headed chick that looks like the one from Star Trek, the first Star Trek movie. I don't know if you, you know, you probably know. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah, bit of a yeah, mohawk, yeah, yeah. and she is yeah. just oh, like, she looks like, and guy? yeah, she's talking yeah. to the guy with the, with MAGA's yeah, hats, yeah, yeah. and there's a woman there too with, with the with them as well. Well, oh, yeah, um, and she's saying that scares me. And she's she's like, it's just playing. It's almost like performance art, you know. Yeah. She's like, like she's, she's like, for yeah, she's looking, yeah, time. she's like that's scary. And then she's trying to say, you know, it's emotions that that make us, you know, who we are. And it's and they're saying, you know, just go get some facts. And there there are the forces of logic and reason. The and closing, she's the forces of emotion. The closing couple seconds of that video were amazing. She oh goes, yeah, she goes, it's all emotions. He's like, yeah, emotions change, facts don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and then, uh, one more thing to add to to put on the fire here, just like I was saying how in a feminine primary social order it becomes more collectivist. Well, it is also based on a, a primarily on feels before reels. Okay. That's what Dr. Everett Piper talks about when I'm on uh, Pat Campbell's show. He's the guy that comes on before me, and he has said that he has seen this and it is just is endemic in our political discourse right now, where it's all about how people feel, mm-hmm. and they're, they need their safe spaces, and they need to uh, to feel secure, and, and that's, you know, words are, are weapons, words are violence, and you, but why? Because it makes me feel bad, and that's what she was just saying, that that hat makes me feel bad. And you've written about yeah. that this is one of the basic ways men and women are different, is yes. women prioritize emotions, Before, then, then instinct, yeah. then logic. Maybe. Which, it, wh- okay, so, so you, you've obviously read that series that I had, it's instinct, Emotion and reason. Men for that's women. For or yeah, for that's men. <laughs> for uh, women, it is instinct, emotion, reason. For men, it is instinct, reason, and then emotion. Because once we figure out what the hell's going on, then we got to f- process how we feel about what we just had to deal with. Women see something that our instincts interpret it. Then they how they feel about that is what freaks them out. And then what are they going to do about it? Men prioritize that differently, and we're doing that in our political discourse. Yes. Why? Because women control the social discourse and control the, so, the 
feminine primary social order. That's exactly what I'm saying. I think it's really hard for guys to understand too is that to women, that makes complete sense. Prioritizing emotions mm-hmm. above mm-hmm. everything else. And, she, like, and, and, and the great example was that ball-headed girl. Yeah, she, was, exactly. she, did, yeah. she didn't know why you, why you don't understand what she said. We were speaking yeah. different languages. Ryan had this really great post on the, on the red, on the, I think it was on the Red Man Red or Red Pill Reddit, um, about, oh no, it was a purple, excuse me, it was a purple pill discussion, and it was how one side want, wants to show correctness and right, you know, be factual, where the other one wants to prove belief. It wants to prove that um, they're doing, the, the facts the may, may show, no, build belief. So mm-hmm. it's like what, whatever is, like you can sh- show them what is factual, and the people on that side of the spectrum believe that that wins the argument or solves the argument. Where the people on the opposite side, they think that no matter what those facts are, if you did the right thing or you did those things for the right reason, then that wins the argument. And again, yeah. male way of thinking, female way That's of like thinking. It's like Cortez saying that, you know, she's morally right, even if she's not factually correct. Or obviously, right. that's you yep. can't have that. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> but it's where that thinking is come, coming from. But with the instincts, real quick, though, wouldn't the instincts for men just be heuristics based on rational thought, whereas the instincts for women might be heuristics based on emotional thinking? The instinct goes before both of those. Oh yeah, I'm just yes. saying. Would the instincts just be heuristics based on? Well, when I when I when I wrote that series, it was it was something that I was actually kind of sorting out for myself because when we have, and this is just from an evolutionary standpoint, when just the way that we evolved, when we see something in our immediate environment, we have to respond to it. So it's stimulus, okay? So that stimulus. We have developed instincts over the years to say, okay, like fight or flight, for instance. Is that a saber-toothed tiger? Holy shit, I better fight or I better run my ass off, right? That's the instinct part. Um, when, when men put themselves in front of live ammunition in an active shooting situation, and they, they get in the way of women that they don't even know just to take the bullet, that's instinct because that is just how we have evolved. It's something that's part of our mental firmware. That's one way of interpreting that That. In, that stimulus, okay? Once you're past the instinctual side, then for women, it's how do I feel about what I'm looking at right now? And those emotions are, are actually a biological uh, response. So like oxytocin can make you feel one way. A lot of testosterone can give you roid rage and can make you feel a certain way. Um, there's other, you know, dopamine, you know, uh, dopamine hits, uh, endorphins, all, there's all co- kinds of chemicals in our chemical cocktail that can influence our emotional state. So don't think that it is just like, but one of the things that women do and, and more, more than a few men do is they apply these supernatural meanings to emotions, just like ball headed girl, Astrology. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So that kind of stuff. So the emotional part, uh, becomes something supernatural to women and that's the most important thing because they have a different way, their, their biology and their brain chemistry and their, the way that their brains are, are, are wired is more for communication. It's more for, um, for interpersonal, like see, like seeing faces, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, well, I think what Pinker was saying, it was men are interested in things and women are interested in people. And that's part of our brain structure. So once you're past the emotional part, then you move on to the rational part or the reason part. Okay. And that's what am I going to do with this information? What have I learned in the past that can help me solve this problem? And what can I do with all this stuff? What does this mean? And how can I use this information to make my life better or to build something? And that's where men come in. So for women, it is instinct, emotion, really big emotion. And then there's reason and there's trying to figure out what they can do. Okay. For men, it is instinct, reason, and then emotion. How does that make them feel? Because men and women process emotions way, way differently, and particularly bad emotions. There's lots of research on love's that. Love's a good one, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah love's yeah, another yeah, one. Yeah, That's love. another reason why we don't, have, we don't share the same brain concept structure, of Male and female brain structure is yeah. vastly different. I want to call it a quick super chat. I'm not going to read through it. Uh, we're run, going to wind down the show in a soon. I want to hit, hit it close it pretty strong. But big shout out to, to uh, BJ Tucker 5 again, $10 super chat. Thank you very much. Yeah. You can respond to your question after the show. So I wanted to say that we started this episode talking about how the red pill has affected our lives outside of dating, outside of sex, looking at like the big picture, family, marriage, things like that. We've not gotten into politics, obviously, throughout the course of the show in different ways. We're about to wrap up. We've got 10, 15 minutes left. I wanted to talk about what's coming up next with the red pill and politics. 
particularly the gender war that Roland's focusing on coming up to 2020. So I think we're going to see 2019 that's going to escalate. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're fucking a few weeks into yeah. 2019. Yeah. It's, 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 it's amazing how fast it's escalating. I think we're going to see that continue through 2019 and then 2020 we're going to see it blow up, I guess. Time to raise an army. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, that was this, so. like you guys were just saying, hey, what's the solution? Obviously, it's not the left and it's imperfect on the right. So what's left is we need to create our own thing. We need to have our own party or our own direction or our own whatever it is. I don't even know what to call it. Like I was telling you guys before, it's like I don't I don't align with the left. Um, I used to be. I don't anymore. But I don't also fully align with the right. And so like. I don't know what I am. I don't, you guys say, well, you're a libertarian. I, I don't, I've never identified as a libertarian you're either. A I don't know what I am. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you know, maybe that's what we need to do is develop some sort that's of... That's what I was thinking about earlier based on the conversation thing. we're having here. Yeah. Is that you're seeing the political parties get so fucking polarized that you have two choices. Pro-America or anti-America. So that's what came to mind based on that earlier. Mm -hmm. But the gender war to me is pretty interesting. Like I think we're going to really see this amp up in 2020 and throughout the rest of this year too. I think it's important to clarify that by gender, it's a war about gender, not men versus women so much, if I'm understanding correctly. Generally. But there's some exceptions, you know. Well, because there's a bunch of males yeah. who maybe are male gender, but they're not men. But we've seen the the males. Or, they're, they're allies. Men. They're yeah, allies. They're allies. They're allies. We've yes. seen some pretty savage stuff just in the past few months. Look at the gender war in terms of Brett Kavanaugh becoming a Supreme Court justice. That, his whole life and family went to hell. I mean, the whole country, not the whole country, but and millions of women were, were angry with this dude, storming the place, spitting, you know, throwing sh all kinds of crazy shit was going mm -hmm. on. Uh, that's not the last time we're going to see that. No. Of course, oh, we're no, going to see no. worse Ruth stuff. Ruth Bader Ginsburg is, is yeah. if she's not already dead and they're just propping her up for things, Weekend she will be <laughs> soon. Yeah, yeah. Weekend at Bernie's. Like you, you may <laughs> actually see, instead of a reconstituting in the U.S., you may see masculine flight to yeah. those areas and countries that actually support you know, relatively traditional human heuristics as far as the development of the family, the value yeah. of the family structure, the value of the masculine very feminine. Places like this. Well, yeah. You're, no, you're at, you, and that's, you, that's uh, the You that, see, that's and Donovan has talked about this, Donovan Sharp has talked about this before, you see this in the black communities. They they are sick of black women and they want to go to Brazil. There's a documentary on, I wrote an yeah. uh, essay on the right. documentary called uh, Bachelor Nation and it's, it's, it's fantastic. You, you guys should watch that. It's just a fantastic um, documentary, but it's it's these guys who are saying, you know, I don't want to have to deal with all the head case with these women who are like these empowered black women that are, you know, they're not attractive, they're bitchy, they're bossy, they're un, they're unfeminine, and so what do they do? They go off to Brazil to look for a feminine woman because the culture is different there, and they're finding it there. But so what happens when we come back to the United States, they say, oh, you're going on sex tourism, or they, they make them villains for right, leaving right. the, for, yeah, for yeah, for leaving the tribe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and one, one of the things that I'm, I've, you know, looking at restructuring my professional life, I, I, it afforded me the opportunity to realize that my partner sits down and comes back to me and goes, whatever you decide, the family's going to support. And I know in my, my personal life, we have family history that did not survive World War II uh, that was in Europe uh, because they did not leave. And I have no illusions to fighting my own government. You're going to lose when you fight your own government, you know, whether you lose physically your life or your integrity with all these other things. Well, we have some counterexamples. Yeah, well, but, but there's, there's tremendous risks involved. I mean, yeah. tre A lot tremendous of the risks. will not side with the left, though. Right. And, and so you sit down and say, you, I could see men getting to the point where they say they will leave prior to doing that, that they will seek their own interest, you know, over living under these conditions. But ultimately, well, I look now, at right? it and yeah. go, that's what just, MGTOW is. That's yeah, yeah, precisely. Yeah, precisely. Right? Right. That's what MGTOW is. My mm -hmm. focus is, I don't care if society, I do, but I, I'm not going to focus on whether society collapses or not. I'm fighting for my family and my nuclear set, you know, that smallest foreign government that I can truly affect. Yeah. My relationship with Mary Francis my children, my family, and from there, you know, and it's a Tostito family, you know, that notion, that Roman notion of the tortoise shell, you know, the, yeah. the basic formation, and go from the basic formation up rather than look at holistically this, this culture and boiling it down to the family. Well, this is one of the roots of the Declaration of Independence, to secure these rights Correct. governments are instituted among them. Property rights, you know, speaking Fathers rights, all this. literally yep. went out and built governments for this exact purpose. Correct. And now it's getting out Correct. of control. Right. Yeah. Ellie, do you want to hop in on this? The gender war coming up in uh, 2020 that we're seeing escalate? 
Yeah, and I know we're talking about, you know, uh, being led to slaughter. And, you know, it's, it's, it has the shit has to hit the fan. I think what's going to emerge as a result is a return to religion. Mm-hmm. I think, and I know for a fact that our ancestors used stories and used metaphor and used religion to re-league man with our true leader. You know, we're, we're, we're talking about fallen people, you know, Donald Trump or even Ron Paul. We're putting all of our hopes, dreams, wishes, and belief in the religion of government. That's really what has happened. And as America has become more secular, we've become more radically religious about this war of dust. So it may be the right thing for us to be led to slaughter so that we'd be led back to the creator, to our God, to our meaning, to what the patriarchs of old understood and delivered to young men, which was meaning. Why? What are you here for? What are you doing? And what is the big picture of this all? What are you going to do before you die? You're asking me, what am I going to do? No, it, just, it, just, it just comes to mind as a thought. It's like we're all, no matter what time you were born in human history, now or 50,000 years ago, you're going to die someday. Mm-hmm. Every single man sitting here is going to die. Who knows when? Tonight, tomorrow, 50 years from now, mm-hmm. it's going to happen. Yeah. So yeah, the mission and purpose comes to mind uh, with that. Right. We have no mission but to consume. We're taught how to be really good consumers and to vote for the best slave master. Yeah. So we ha- we, shit hitting the fan has to happen here and here first and we've got the when we become disillusioned enough that we can non not comply and live a life of civil disobedience and in the way the founders expected to take individual responsibility for ourselves for our families for our local government state government and then it it, it goes from the individual integration to the integration of the world what we're doing is looking out there and saying, they need to fix this, they're wrong, we need that guy, as opposed to going from the inside in and say, align myself with my truth, be a husband with my wife, a father with my children, generative with my community, and then working out this way. So we'll have, this will all have, to, this illusion, because we all live in the fucking clouds, and this is just one, one more example of us living in this transcendent make-believe cloud. It all has to crumble for us to come back home. And I, I think that's when we'll start rebuilding. I, think, I really like how you put that. I think, uh, you, I think you're right. Inside. I think yeah. you're right. And I'll tell you why I think you're Well, of course, I'm writing a book about this right now. Mm-hmm. But prior to the sexual revolution, what did we have? to keep, at, well, as checks and balances or as a buffer against the worst aspects of hypergamy or Community the worst members. aspects of male, you know, males' sexual imperatives. Mm-hmm. Um, we had religion. We had um, so- social stigma. Like, I've, I've made this, this, uh, this comparison a lot. My, uh, my mother-in-law comes from a uh, society or social order that was pre sexual revolution. So when a woman had a child out of wedlock, they would take that child and put that child away or that kid away and they would, they would have the kid and they would give it up for adoption. But it was a, it was a there was social stigma so much so that the family would bring shame on the family. We don't have that anymore. In fact, we encourage uh, single motherhood celebrate to the point. Yeah, we yeah, celebrate. Absolutely. Absolutely. We celebrate. 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 We celebrated the uh, abortion decision just recently. Nice. They were <laughs> cheering <laughs> for this. Okay, oh, and but Volta. why is that? Because those those checks and balances are no longer there anymore. They're gone. Um, and that's, you don't suffer the consequences. Yeah, I mean, the consequences were life and death. They yeah, were dire. yeah, you could, and well, and then you know, you can say what you want to about Muslim cultures right now, but they have they have their women in check because they still have those checks and balances as part of that culture and as part of that religion. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that the, and the MGTOW say, well, you know, we're, it's all going to go to hell, but it's going to be the Muslims who, who take over because they already have that in place because they're aligned and they, have their, they know 
where they are in the universe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and if you have a child out of wedlock, well, that might be an honor killing for you, or that might be uh, some kind of uh, stigma or some kind of social disgrace. So, you know, if, if women know that there are consequences for those actions and men know that there mm -hmm. are consequences for their own actions, they're going to behave in such a way that you're not going to have the kinds of social ills that we have today in a feminine primary social order. So yeah, I, I, do, I agree with you. I think that there will be a return to religion at some point. Mm -hmm. Whenever and this boundaries is, and conservatism yes. and rules and commandments. We're already seeing that with the, with the Lost Boys. It's one of the reasons why uh, Jordan Peterson is such a, a, an enigma right now. It's like he just says, you know, stand up straight and put your arms back and wash your penis or something mm -hmm. like that. Yes. And and men want that. Mm -hmm. They will want, oh, That's a direction. It, it might be some screwball direction as far as I'm concerned, but they want that. They want that direction. They want to have, a, they're, they're, what are, you know, we call them rudderless. Well, they give, you give them a rudder at least and they can go where they want to. And People get my book and they have some kind of, of, of man, a Chilton manual. You know, they have some kind of manual that gives them at least an idea. I don't do 12 steps in, in the rational mail, but I give you the nuts and bolts and I say, here's, here's how you can put the car together go put the car together. I'm not interested in making better men. I'm interested in men making themselves better mm -hmm. men. And that's why I, that's where quick, I've always come from. Quick hat tip to our channel sponsor. If yeah. You if you need to wash your Johnson, tactical soap, Jordan Peterson probably would approve it. We'll see. <laughs> so link is in the description. Also, and bodybarber.com, B-A-W-D-Y barber.com. Yeah. Closing comments? Yeah, we're gonna wrap, wrap it up in a few yeah. minutes. Closing comments, gentlemen. Yeah. The future absolutely is masculine because there's no viable alternative. I'm going to leave it where it is. You guys have been great. So. Yeah, this is yeah, awesome. a great yeah, show. Yeah. I mean, I don't... Yeah, I don't we're, getting, we're getting good yeah. comments on yeah. this one. Solid show. Solid solid feedback from guys in Super Chats. And yeah, we just got another one. $20 Canadian. Yes. Shout out. Uh, like, yeah. I'll read Shout it off out. real quick. and maybe answer in the chat later. Richard was on Tinder and Bumble for three months. 47 matches, no dates. Hypergamy is a bitch. I need to be better. What is your number one recommendation for men in 40s? To secure better women. Get off of Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the fish in the pond. Get off of Tinder and Bumble. Yeah. Yeah. Meet them in person. We'll yeah. this in the chat. But Old school. Super chat man, 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll answer that. Someone get back that's, to it. that's easy. That's just chase your own excellence and stop yeah. putting women on a pedestal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Men's point of origin, yeah. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. So this has been fun. I think we should do this again sometime. I wish we had more occasion to do this I'm, a little I'm, bit more often. I'm glad we have this, you know, this panel and everybody's remote, like local, and someone remote, but local. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's an opportunity to get together. We did some cool shit. We shot yeah. guns. We drove a Lamborghini. We were hanging out with Elliot Hulls. You both Hulls. caught your first fish, man. Not mm -hmm. a big ass fish. Yeah. I want to go. Yeah. I want to go like. Offshore, like deep sea. Oh, yeah, yeah like you want to go. On a, you want to go. On, we need to take you on like a, a big fight. head boat. Just get yeah. in there with a the fish. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> 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 yeah, it was fun. Real it, it in, man. It was awesome. It was amazing. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, yeah. that was so good. So maybe that's the reason why we should be getting together. So you know, at some yeah. point, I'd like to get Donovan in here. I'd like to get uh, Ryan down yeah. here. Uh, we need if, to build if, out a proper. Well, studio we'll get Carl, but we'll like put a big old mask on Carl. to bring you. Bring you to some jam nights. Yeah, we need to build a proper studio to continue to do this on a more in depth. Man looking for yeah. millions of dollars to build 20 minutes. <laughs> yes, well, I, I, I architect sitting over here for certainly, it. certainly helps if you support with you know so, content creation that, that comes from sponsors that actually value men and masculinity. The stuff we're talking about mm -hmm. a guy that got red pill going through divorce and said, Hey, why don't I take a soap product and infuse pheromones in it and give a guy a little bit of an edge? Right? I gotta say, people have criticized I like the guy. soap, uh, I like the channel. guy a lot. They've criticized it. I've seen criticized Rich, George. You're showering. You're guys. showering. If you're watching our channels, yeah. buy soap from a from a company yeah. that supports what we make, or buy a uh, buy a shaver from let's one. Put it, let's put it this way too, though. Scott is a guy who showed up at the convention. Yeah, put this his money guy, where his mouth fuck, was. he put his money where his fucking mouth was. He got in a flight, came to Florida, got a hotel, and came to the convention. Talk to the attendees, talk to me, talk to Rich, talk to the speakers. He showed up. A lot of these guys, these haters and losers, they don't show up. No, no action. Yeah. All bitching, all talk, mm. no action. Soap is where it's at. Tactical fucking soap. Yeah. Super soap. 10% off. Check out with RMG. The link's pinned in the description below. There you go. Thanks, gentlemen. Yeah. yeah. It was really awesome good. Show. Thank you. Oh, last thing. Uh, visit patreon.com slash redmangroup. Check out links in the description for you know, the Patreon. You can get there for a monthly Q&A. It's private, not on the channel. Yeah. There's also social media links for the Redman Group to Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. Also, hit the like button on this video if you haven't yet. We have, uh, who knows how many viewers, like a thousand or something. And there's not that many likes, which means some of you are watching and not liking. 
Yeah, man. You smash that like button like it's the matriarchy. Smash, <laughs> smash, <laughs> smash. <laughs> equal rights, equal lefts. That's what you need. Yeah. The like button. All need the like button. Don't hit the other one. The like button. Share it with your friends. Uh, we also are on Podbean. So you can go to redmangroup.podbean.com, get the audio yeah. files. It'll be on iTunes within a couple of days. Yeah. With that said, this has been RMG uh, episode 51 yep. in 21 Studios Global Command in Orlando, Florida. I've had with me live Socrates. I've had Drew Bay, Elliot Hulse, myself, Anthony Dream Johnson, Richard Cooper, and Rolo Tomasi.